the recording and display any relevant document for each agenda item. The meeting is recording. Thank you. All right, good evening. I'm now calling the Tuesday, October 20th, 2020, regular meeting of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District order. The time is 7.01 p.m. Please note that in support of the physical distancing during uh, the local public health emergency in accordance with Governor Gavin, 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 Gavin Newsom's order to relax Brown Act rules during the public health crisis, we are conducting the meeting via video conference. Because we are video conferencing, we will follow a strict protocol for the benefit of the recording. I will, I will indicate when commissioner, staff, and presenters, and the public will provide comments. If you have called into the meeting and are not using a webcam, please state your name uh, prior to providing your comments for the benefit of the recording. If any participant who is presenting during the meeting would like to leave prior to the end of the meeting, please state your name and announce that you are leaving for the benefit of the recording. Please practice considered video conferencing etiquette by muting your line when you are not speaking and limiting distracted behavior on the camera. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct the roll call. Okay, commissioners, I will be conducting all roll calls this evening in the same order. Please remember the order so that you're prepared to provide your comment or vote. President Warren. Present. Vice President Vaughn. Present. Commissioner Tyson. Here. Commissioner Price. Here. Commissioner Spreen. Here. Commissioner Carr. Here. Commissioner Kearney. Here. Okay, all commissioners are present. And for the benefit of the recording, I'll also conduct a presenters and staff roll call. Assistant Fire Chief Glass. Present. Santa Clara, yeah, Santa Clara County Fire District Support Services Manager, David Snow. I'm here. Strategic Planning Consultant, Scott. Here. Emergency Services Manager, Captain Gluhan. Yes. Did you hear me okay, President? Yeah, but very quietly. <laughs> You're very quiet. <laughs> okay. Um, General Manager, Logan. Logan, Logan, Logan. It's Victoria who's got the feedback. There we go. Yeah, um, I, I didn't hear. Uh, so it's not a matter of here. Okay. Uh, District Legal Counsel Coelho. Good evening. Here. Special Project Services Consultant Hendricks. Present. And Consultant for Technical Services BB. Here. Present. Okay. Presenters and staff are all accounted for. Great, we'll now move to item two. Uh, Commission President's remarks. So uh, first of all, let me say how good it is to see everyone this evening in you know mid to late fall. Um, I wanna thank everyone for making time to attend this evening. Um, and so for my, my remarks tonight, I think you know, it, you know, it goes without saying, I wanna thank the staff for the incredible effort that went into preparing this organization and guiding us through the recent um, meeting with the Board of Supervisors. I mean, there was a countless, countless hours on the back end that made that successful for this organization. Um, you know, and lots of activities that, you know, the general public didn't see, the preparation, the pulling of information, um, getting the word out to the community, um, as was pointed out, getting, you know, 130 plus members of the community to all agree on something in Los Altos Hills is pretty remarkable. And that's no uh, small part due to the effort of the staff um, and the other commissioners. And so I wanna thank everyone who participated in that for making you know, a successful outcome. Um, and we'll now chart a path forward from that. And with that, I'd like to move to the regular agenda. We have another full agenda tonight. Um, so what we'll do is I'll move to the public comment section. Um, so, um, public comment. Persons wishing to address the district on any subject, whether or not on the agenda, may do so now. Please note, however, the district is not able to undertake extended discussion or action tonight on items not on the agenda. Items may be referred to staff for appropriate action, which may include placement on the next available agenda. Please note that while the district board will hear comment upon items which are on the agenda at this time, the district will not act on any such item until the item is is under consideration by the district. District policy is to limit public testimony to three minutes per speaker. 
do we have any public comment on items or on, items on or not on the agenda? Dave Stewart would like to make a comment. Please, Dave. Okay. Uh, my name is Dave Stewart. About a year ago, Neil Caton and I submitted a proposal to extend internet connectivity out to the ARC to improve our communication abilities with the town and other emergency responders. And for a lot of good reasons, that hasn't seen a lot of progress. Uh, in summary, all we want to do is to run an ethernet wire out to the corner of the building and put up a small antenna to communicate over the parking lot to the ARC. I note that uh, tonight, agenda item 7B is a discussion of capital improvements to the El Monte Fire Station. And I would like the uh, commissioners to consider adding our proposal to the list of capital improvements. And that ends my comment. Thank you, Dave. Um, Joe, um, Jay, would you please put that on the list for consideration? Take like note of that. Yes, yeah, certainly. Thank you. Any other public comment? Neil Milkey would like to make a comment. Please, Neil, proceed. See if I could even start video. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, so I'm Neil Milkey on La Loma Drive. Uh, there's been a lot of celebration over not getting dissolved, and uh, that is great. Uh, but we do need to move forward. The status quo isn't good. There are fire hazards all through the district, and the threats from Rancho San Antonio and Foothills Park are even worse. Um, we should try to complete major mitigation projects before next year's fire season, and that you know, that means starting now. Um, I, I'm wondering if we could spend some of the built up cash reserves, buy a bulldozer, a masticator, alert camera, whatever, um, whatever makes sense and get them working sooner rather than later. I've read Chief Bowden's documented plan for the county as a whole and it, it looks pretty solid to me. Can we start implementing that locally without waiting for more studies? Uh, as I ask this, I'm, I'm aware of two obstacles. The first one is uh, that's internal is simple complacency, but I do think that everyone here is pretty energized. The external one that's kind of the, uh, the elephant in the room is that the Board of Supervisors might paralyze the district because of the distrust created by the audit and the close uh, scrutiny the district is under. Uh, I think county council and the board need to be challenged to immediately define the boundary conditions for what the district can and cannot do when partnering with other entities and with local residents. Uh, you know, lead, follow, or get out of the way. The district needs joint programs with open space, Palo Alto, the town itself, and local residents. Supervisor Chavez seemed at one point to be a champion of dissolving the district, but at the end, she spoke pretty passionately of her fear for the increasing wildfire risk and her concern that uh, more studies would just lead to more delays. I think we ought to take her at her word. Uh, let's move boldly, quickly, and responsibly. I'm hoping that the district can put bold, fast-moving plans together aligned to Chief Bowden's plan so that the Board of Supervisors will you know, trust what it comes up with. We can be a pilot program for the whole county. Uh, there is money in the bank, uh, so it's possible to act now. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Are there any additional public comments? Um, Alan would like to make a comment, Mr. President. Alan, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. I'd like to follow up on Neil's comments. Uh, I think he's exactly right on point. And I think, you know, we need to answer these questions. We need to understand what it is that the district is allowed to do in terms of working with um, its uh, uh, other, other agencies. There are some specific questions that have been identified by the Board of Supervisors. Uh, one following up from the, the meeting on October 6th talks about some type of comprehensive review and operational study that the district is supposed to do. I didn't hear that in the meeting, but if you read the operational summary of the proceedings, it says you guys are responsible for doing that. 
Uh, recommendation 1.1 talks about a study to determine, you know, whether capital expenditures could be made with other entities. What's the status of that report? We need the information in order to decide how to proceed. Um, recommendation 4.1 um, uh, talks about working in conjunction with the Santa Clara County Fire Department and implementing their recommendations. Well, what recommendations are they? Are they the ones that the that the chief made to the county? Are they applicable to us? And if so, well, let's get let's get moving. Let's get started on them. So, uh, congratulations for uh, avoiding being terminated. But uh, that should motivate us all to get moving and get things prepared for the next fire season that is not very far away. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any additional comments? All right. Thank you all for your comments. We'll now move on to item four, which is the consent calendar and changes to the order of the um, order of the board of commissioners, uh, commission agenda. So um, just for everyone, you know, I don't know the history for how long we had been doing the consent calendar at the end of the meeting, um, but to, um, as we continue to evolve our processes, we are reordering the, um, the agenda and in style um, that is compatible with the Board of Supervisors, we're pulling our consent calendar forward. So it's actually the first item we'll do is the consent calendar um, items to get them approved and then move on to the regular agenda. Um, and so what we have is item uh, four, um, A, approval of the draft minutes of the September 15th, 2020 regular meeting. Item four B, receive uh, report uh, three, uh, excuse me, receive period report three, September 2020. Item four C, receive uh, period report 13, FY, nine, FY 2019, FY 2020 final. Are there any comments on the staff from the above items? All right, hearing none. Um, would any of the commissioners like to pull any of the items from the consent calendar or add any items to the consent calendar? Hearing none. All right, I would like to suggest we change the order of the agenda. To, uh, so hang on. So what we need to do, uh, Rob, I need your guidance here. I need a motion to get, do I need a motion to approve the consent calendar? Yes. Okay. So, Sarah, I think we left that out. Um, it's further down in the script. Um, I was going to try to streamline it so you guys could make the motion to approve the consent calendar as well as changes to the order of the agenda. Oh, okay. So, yeah. we need to do that. We need to we have that motion, approve it, so we can change the order of the agenda. I believe so. Rob can confirm. Uh, I think you have the discretion to uh, take things out of order. Uh, but for process purposes, to the extent that you want the motion to uh, be both to approve the consent agenda and to agree that uh, item 15 will be heard earlier, uh, right. you're welcome to suggest it and someone can make the motion. All right. So let's just do it as, as Sarah has, has, has written out for me, so I'm not going to get myself lost. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is that for the, for the flow of the meeting tonight, we want to pull item 15 forward, um, which is the um, successor strategic plan. Uh, we wanted to um, bring that earlier in the agenda while people are fresh and have um, ideas. And so what I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to propose here that we change the order of the agenda to move item 15, successor strategic plan report, to immediately follow item 7, which uh, which is the Santa Clara County Fire Chief's report. Um, is there any opposition from the commission in making this change to the agenda? None for me. All right. Hearing none other. Also, I'm going to make one more change to the agenda. I'm going to, uh, I'd also like to pull item 13C from the agenda. Item 13C is entitled approval and authorization of the execution of the First Amendment to the agreement with Santa Clara County Fire Safe Council for program services, increasing the maximum contract amount from $15,000 for additional 22 home inspection zone HIZ services at 450 per unit to a total of $9,900 and 
$5,100 for hazardous fuel reduction HFR services for the district lot cleanup. Um, Fire State Council and the district did not have sufficient time to come to an agreement in term, on terms in the First uh, Amendment. Staff and FFC will return with no, on November 17th with a new agreement rather than an amendment. The district parcel lot cleanup will continue as planned. However, HIZs will not exceed the 60 currently contracted in the agreement. Are there any questions from the commission on why we're making this change to the agenda? Uh, just a question. I didn't understand. There's a procedural reason. I, I think, that based on what I heard earlier from Mr. Milky or Milky, um, if we could get started on expanding what has, I think, stopped because we ran out of money for this uh, hazardous in ignition zone inspection, is there a way we could approve that still yet today? And and so that as soon as maybe there's agreement on the on the terms that we can we can initiate work. So could we cover that in another agenda item besides HI? This is 13C we're pulling, just this amendment. Or George, you want to drill down on 13C further because we don't have an agreement tonight to, to review. Okay. Uh, this is Duffy speaking. Yes, and I'm anxious to get that lot cleaned up. So whatever we can do, because residents are calling me wanting to know what the heck is going on. The lot is a mess. Okay. And it's really, for us who are really interested in fire prevention, it looks pretty bad. So we right. got to keep working on it. So they're going to so, keep on that. Let's talk about all that when we get to the hazardous fuel, fuel production good. section. Okay. Right. Let's get through the uh, bureaucratic section here. So, so I make a, may I make a motion to approve the consent calendar as uh, documented? Great. With the change on the agenda? Yes. With the change on the agenda. Thank you, Duffy. Do I have a second? On second. Thank you, Ron. The item is open for discussion. Is there any discussion from the commission? It's just a process, process question for Rob. Just in general, uh, it's always my understanding that the president is free to move agenda items around as he needs. Do we need to move and second and vote on agenda changes? You do not. Um, it, it's fine uh, to do so, but there's no legal requirement. The uh, presider certainly has the ability to say, for the convenience of the public or so that we can hear things uh, while folks are fresh. I'm going to uh, hear item number 15 immediately following item seven. That would have been acceptable, um, but it's also fine to do it uh, by consensus through the voting process. Either is okay. Okay, thank you. So okay. we're, we're killing it, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments from the commission? Any comments from the public? Hearing none, if there's no further discussion, we'll now vote. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct a roll call. President Warren? Yes. Vice President Vaughn? Favor. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Spreen? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kearney? Yes. And the motion passes seven to zero. Thank you. We'll now move to item five, essential Government Functions Report. Item 5A, receive report on Santa Clara County Public Health Orders. General Manager Logan, please provide the report. Thank you, President Warren. Uh, Santa Clara County has recently progressed to what's called the orange tier, and that's in a blueprint for a safer economy, which provides for additional activities. And if you see the attached charts for activities that are on the screen, uh, these are activities that are allowed and the percentage of capacity allowed and activities not allowed. There we go. Okay. Um, although regions in the United States and Europe are experiencing upticks in the COVID-19 event, Santa Clara County continues to hold or decrease incidences due to these precautions taken. Um, and so thank you. That's the end of my report, unless there's any questions. Thank you, Manager Logan. Is there any discussion from the commission? No. Good. Is there any public comment on this? Thank you. Uh, hearing none, we'll now move on to item six, which is the Los Altos Hills uh, County Fire District Management Audit Report. <laughs> item 6A, uh, receive the uh, September 17, 2020 <coughs> supplemental letter to the post audit report plan and update on Santa Clara County 
land housing land use environment and transportation committee hewlett and item 6b receive update on the regular meeting of the santa clara county board of supervisors on october 6 2020 meeting los altos hills county fire district management audit report resolution for dissolution of the district and rescission of the de delegation of authority general manager logan please provide the report yes thank you president warren i'll begin with item 6a and the attachment to 6A was a copy of the supplemental letter to the district post audit report plan. And in that report, in that supplemental letter, the district agrees to recommendation 5.1, and I'll review it with you. It's to reduce the risk of inconsistent or non-compliant contracting by the use of county procurement policies or state law. And the district agreed to that recommendation and also effective August 19, 2020, County Council is now the district's legal representative in compliance with recommendation 5.1. So this transition from representation from private council to county council now ensures county directed procurement policies and processes are being implemented by the district. The district will follow county procurement policies and county council will review as to form and legality and advise the district procurement and practices. In summary, Los Altos Hills County Fire District agrees with six of the seven recommendations in the management audit report. The district disagreed with recommendation 1.2 to suspend its delegation of authority as stated in the management audit report and finds the issue to be rendered moot based upon the district agreement and compliance with all the other recommendations and the use of county council services. The district gave written notification to its vendors that it would be adhering to county procurement procedures and was using county council for all legal matters. So that's the review of item 6.A and then item 6.B. Uh, let me just review and summarize what occurred on October 6. At the request of Supervisors Simidian and Ellenberg, the County Board of Supervisors directed administration of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District to report to the board on a monthly basis until October of 2021 through the Housing Land Use Environment and Transportation Committee, which is called Hewlett, and the Finance and Government Operations Committee called um, FGOC and also to the Management Audit Division related to the in implementation of a comprehensive review and operational study as described in, but not limited to, the recommendations in the Management Audit of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District. In addition, at the request of Supervisor Submidian, the board directed administration to collaborate with the Local Agency Formation Commission of Santa Clara County, better known as LAFCO, relating to prioritization of countywide fire protection services review over other services review. At the request of Supervisors Simidian and Ellenberg, the board directed administration to collaborate with County Council and the fire districts relating to providing public and confidential documents to the board, including but not limited to any pending transfers of property. At the request of President Chavez and Supervisor Simidian, the board directed administration to report to the board in November 2020 related to a timeline and scope regarding comprehensive independent operational study of how to best organize and resource fire protection in Santa Clara County, including uh, robust public engagement and outreach to all stakeholders. Item 14, the board of supervisors received the management audit of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District. In item 16, the, uh, there was an adoption by the board, by the governing board of the Santa Clara County Central Fire Protection District initiating application by Santa Clara County Fire Protection District for the dissolution of uh, South Santa Clara County Fire District and Los Altos Hills County Fire District and annexation of their territory into the Santa Clara County Fire District. That item was tabled indefinitely at the request of Supervisor Simidian and Vice President Wasserberg, Wasserman. Item 17 was to adopt a resolution of the governing board of the South Santa Clara County Fire District, rescinding its delegation of authority to the South County, County Fire District Board of Commissioners and initiating application by South 
Santa Clara County Fire District requesting that the South, that the Santa Clara County Local Agency Formation Commission pursue proceedings for the dissolution of South Santa Clara County Fire District and the Los Altos Hills County Fire District and annexation of their territory into Santa Clara County Central Fire Protection District. That motion was deleted at the request of Supervisor Cortese. And then item 18 was the adoption of the resolution of the governing board of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District for sending its delegation of authority <laughs> to the Los Altos Hills County Fire District Board of Commissioners and initiating application of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District requesting that the South Santa Clara County Local Agency Formation Commission pursue proceedings for the dissolution of South Santa Clara County Fire District and the Los Altos Hills County Fire District and annexation of their territories into the Santa Clara County Central Fire Protection District that that item was tabled indefinitely at the request of Supervisor Simidian and Vice President Wasserman pending the County Fire Protection Service review. Um, that were that was all the motions that were before the Board of Supervisors and the action that was taken that took place. In addition to that information, uh, 134 individuals addressed the board, the Board of Supervisors. <laughs> 1,367 persons signed a petition in opposition of suspension of authority and consolidation of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District. And full overview of consolidation efforts, links to letters, reports, videos of the meeting, agenda packets, updates from supervisors submitting and dated October 8, 2020, and a summary of motions and additional information is now on the Los Altos Hills Town website under the term consolidation. If you want a really neat and handy way of reviewing all the information, that's the best place to find it. I think with all this activity, what came to my mind is a lot of questions that yet to have to be resolved and that we have to figure out what the process is for the determination of the answers to those questions. Uh, one of them is what is the district's reporting to the county committees on a monthly basis? What's the form, the content, and, what's, when, when, and how will we focus well, that would be demonstrating the adherence to the management audit recommendations. That's certainly one of the questions before us. Another is once county council completes its research and review under section one, use of fire district funds, will investment to increase hydrant fire flow, pipeline resiliency, and infrastructure to maintain hydrant operations during emergencies be appropriate use of district funds. Clarifications to those questions will come from county council on the legal issues and from the various county committees on the policy perspectives. Another question, how can the district work more collaboratively with Los Altos Hills Town to define its responsibilities and its jurisdiction in fire related and in emergency matters? A fourth question, how will the fire district continue to protect and provide for the safety of the community through prevention and protection programs for the best and most efficient use of district funds to benefit the greatest number of the public. Effectiveness of the district as a participant in the upcoming studies for LAFCO and the independent study by the county on regional wildfire protection review is certainly going to be one of the questions the district's going to have to embrace. How the district will participate in regional discussions related to wildfires and emergency preparedness is another question. And reviewing and refreshing the district's relationship with Santa Clara County Fire Department and the new BC position that was created for wildfire programs, assessing fire maps, areas for hazardous fuel reductions, shade shade shaded fuel breaks, and fire breaks around the open space and preserved boundaries of the district is certainly going to be one of the questions to look at. And then upcoming is the discussion of the successor strategic plan looking at how to integrate what has occurred with district programs into the management audit guidelines. I just wanted to summarize the many, many um, questions and the work that we have in front of us to move forward from this management audit. I think it maybe sounds daunting when you start listing it and I know everyone wants action right now, but these are questions that have to be sorted out very quickly and then in addition to that, we've got opens, openings on the um, Board of Commissioners that we're, we're going to have to be filled also. 
So that's kind of my review of, of those, uh, that item. And I thank you, President Warren. That's at the end of my comments. Great. Thank you, General Manager Logan. All right, is there any discussion at this point from the commissioners on the readout from the management of it? This is Duffy speaking. Is it yes, possible, hi, uh, Jay, that was an excellent summary. Uh, but can we see that in writing? Do you have that written out in some format that we can grasp and look at ourselves? That would be very helpful. But I clearly agree that we really have to really integrate this entire process into the strategic plan moving forward, but we can't let it hold us back. We have to start being fairly aggressive and we're really depending on Rob Quelo, the new county council to assist us in that regard. And I certainly hope you're up to it, Rob, because we really do need to move forward as you can see, just for the uh, continuation of what you heard presented from all the residents at this meeting, at the board meeting, that they expect uh, good things to continue and are most supportive. All these residents are very supportive of our efforts. So we really want to uh, take action and uh, move things forward as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Price, for those comments. That was an excellent summary. And I think of all things we have to do, we have to live up to the expectations of the residents and the community and the public who depend upon the fire district and also who supported the fire district in a right. unanimous kind of fashion. But yes, those remarks are written. I will send them to the um, district clerk and they will be in the minutes at the for the next meeting. Excellent. And I can Thank send you. them earlier if you need them. No, that's good. Okay. Thank hey, you. Any additional Jay, comments? I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead, Melvin. Uh, Jay, is it possible to also put that on the, um, on the district's website as well? Absolutely. Great idea. Sarah, take notes on all of this, okay? Thanks, Sarah. Got all a lot right. of work to do. Other commissioners? All right. Um, do we have any public comment on this item? All right. Hearing none? Um, oh, Alan sorry, has uh, Alan, Alan just Go ahead, please. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak. I guess my my question is is um, there's a lot of questions, obviously, and we'd all like to have uh, answers to the questions. Is there any sort of timetable that that the um, commission can um, relay to the to the public as to when when these questions are are likely to be answered? Thank you. Um. Jay, I don't think we have any at this time, but I think we probably, you know, as, as you sort through this over the next month, we probably should have a plan of action to address and answer the questions with milestones. Sure. Yes. A work plan. A work plan. Yeah. I think once my thought is if, get the, the, the larger picture strategic successor strategic plan. And then from that, that in each of the goal areas, drill it down into a work plan with the deliverables and the timetables. That may make sense from an organizational perspective. Great. Any further public comment? All right. Thank you. Thank, and thank you. you for everyone helping us get through that whole you know, evolution. That was huge. All right. We'll now move to item seven, Santa Clara County Fire Chief report. Item 7A, receive the monthly report of September 2020. Assistant Fire Chief Glass, please provide the report. Oh, good evening, President Warren, <clears throat> members of the commission and staff. Uh, we have, uh, thankfully, a, a pretty uneventful month. If we can move to page two. Um, a little off the pace, 585 calls for the year, uh, 78 for last uh, the last month, and, and which is you know, consistent with what we've been doing, but we do, we're definitely slower than we have been over the past years. And we attribute that to COVID. I feel like a broken record sometimes reporting this stuff, but uh, again, 78 total calls in the month and absolutely zero late calls, which is, which is great. Uh, again, we're attributing that to decrease in traffic and response. Dollar loss was zero to the district. There were two fire calls. Those were smoke scares, uh, one off Moody and one off Sherlock. 
and a total of four programs were participated in by members of the Santa Clara County Fire Department. Uh, one was the evacuation drill, and then we had some of our online classes uh, where we had uh, participants. And with that, um, uh, you wanna look at page three, you can see the disbursement of calls throughout the district, and I'm happy to entertain any questions. Any questions from the commissioner for Chief Glass? Any questions from the public? Okay, thank you, Chief Glass. Hi, right, very welcome. We'll now move to item 7B, receive report from Dave Snow, support services manager for capital improvements at the El Monte Fire Station. Mr. Snow, please provide the report. Dave, you're on mute. Dave, you're muted. Thank you, President Warren and commissioners. Thanks for having me tonight. <clears throat> As uh, related in the agenda packet, on September 15th, we had an architect visit with us out at the El Monte station. We focused on the areas of converting upstairs restrooms, options to renovate the existing kitchen, possibly adding a chief's restroom, modifying crew quarters, making the lobby, most importantly, ADA accessible. We noticed a problem from the ADA parking the slope and the grade, the path of travel carrying in through the station and what could be done to make that better and more efficient for the station. We also looked at converting storage room 102 into a true work at area. That's an area that's downstairs. If you're not familiar with it, it used to be an old bottle fill station. And given the size of the staff and the importance of physical fitness, we're looking at other reuse for the room. We're looking, we looked at training room 106 and how to best update that and possibly adding workstations in there to make it, make it uh, more accessible for the folks that need to meet in there once COVID is over. And also um, possibly looking at uh, greater detail in the battalion chief's quarters into two individual rooms, two bunks and four lockers for a room. And then taking a look at the conference room that's um, well dated and looking at what kind of modern updates could be done and how can we best use that space. And so that was the initial site walk with the architect. And we currently have Holly Peterson Snyder under contract that's working with us on our new headquarters remodel. We have capacity in our service agreement to address what El Monte station would need through this architect. So far, so good. We have success with them. They're all, they also have a number of contracts with County of Santa Clara. And the principal, Alan Turner, sent a proposal over just the other day, and it was to accomplish scoping design phase related to the Los Altos Hills Fire Station with deliverables to include the architectural plan and sketches showing proposed improvements, an analysis of the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, and structural narratives discussing any modifications needed for those systems and a preliminary construction cost estimate to base project decisions. I think that's a very good move for the commissioners to consider. Um, when we look at this proposal next month, of course, the architect sends us a value with time and what they think it takes and there's a negotiation that needs to happen so it's not ready for prime time. But when we come back next month, if you approve an architect's proposal, then we'll be able to return in the following months to give you an idea of what you can expect for projects. And some things you might do right away, some things might be put on shelf for the future. But we, uh, this is consistent with our approach at the Santa Clara County Fire Department is to first look at all the requirements, physical constraints and feasibility then look at plans and programs and then decide what do we have an appetite for. So that's, it's just a check in this month. Unfortunately, we didn't have a full proposal for you, but I think that uh, by next month, we'll have a lot more details in that regard. And with that, I can answer any questions. Great. Thank you, Dave. Um, is there any discussion from the commissioners? Commissioner Kearney has a question, I believe. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, thanks for that. Uh, I would want to ask Dave Stewart whether or not the um, request or suggestion that he made earlier requires running coax cable or doing anything um, complicated enough to have the architect or the electricians who are involved in this project um, take a look at it. 
Uh, I'm not sure. And that's actually the reason why I'm suggesting that we add it in here. My concern is not that it's a particularly complicated bit of work. It's really just running an ethernet wire from the commissioner's uh, data closet now out to the far corner of the building and hanging an antenna that's about a foot square on uh, the fence out there. That gets us line of sight over to the arc. It is the kind of thing that, you know, if I was doing this at home, I'd do it in an afternoon, but uh, I'm not sure what the requirements are for government buildings, fire department buildings, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, Dave Snow, can you speak to Dave Stewart's question? Is this the kind of thing that you think needs to have some sort of permitting? Um, certainly. I, d I don't believe that the scope that, that's described in um, Jay Logan shared it with me prior to the meeting. It's my understanding it's a point-to-point -point Wi-Fi. So there is a little bit of work that we need to do as far as making sure that we can um, supply the utility to the point it needs to be on the station and make sure we don't penetrate any firewalls and that sort of thing. And then there's a little bit of work on the back end to collect the signal. Um, we always wanna make sure that we avoid interference, whether with the native signal or any other um, things that are happening in the station. But I think we could probably carve out that need if that's the commissioner's wish into a, a separate little mini project. And the Santa Clara County Fire Department's happy to take that on, meet with our, uh, cable installer and sort of develop a scope of work and probably get a proposal prior to the next board of commissioners meeting. And then we can bring that back to you for approval and then do the installation. So it's pretty cut and dry. Yeah, so why don't I propose this? Why don't we add that as a mini project? And, and so it's outside of the scope of the big project because the big project is probably gonna take a lot longer, but that this, this communication for the ARC if we could move that forward in an expeditious manner. Let's please that, but you know, as a separate proposal for next month, Dave. Dave That'd Snow. Be fine. Dave Snow. Yep. Which Dave? Dave? <laughs> yeah, both Dave. Yeah, we, we can do that for you, no problem at all. Great. Excellent. All right. Um, Thank you, Dave Snow. No great. problem, Dave Stewart. Okay. I have a question for Dave Snow, if I may. Yes. Hi, uh, Dave. Okay. Dave, Dave Snow, uh, could you explain a little bit, I, I'm not sure I understand, the downstairs area, which we now use as a CERT training room, did I understand that, that you were looking at remodeling that into a workout room? Uh, no, incorrect. So there's the CERT training room. Yes. There's a room adjacent to it that has a bottle filling station and believe it or not, a sewing machine to take care of uh, uh, personal protective equipment and some other uh, water bottles and whatnot. And then next to that is the bathroom and then the actual workout room. And the workout room is pretty small, especially during COVID. And what we're trying to do as a department is limit people wanting to work out on the apparatus bay floor or the apron because we're trying to have healthy in, healthy out and avoid firefighters from doing those types of workouts in the environment where there could be hazardous material or something coming off the engine. So the long story short is no. The, the training room that you're referring to, it will always be what it is. And there's a separate entrance for it, but it looks like it needs to be modernized. It could be made more efficient because there's built-in shelving that we might be able to redesign and then possibly add in some workstations. That's what I picked up from the last commissioner's meeting. Okay. And Dave Stewart, you're so involved with our Los Altos Hills certs and all of the activities. You know, you're just the volunteer par excellence. So I would really want to have your input uh, as to what that training room could do to be more efficient and effective for your cert volunteers. Okay. I presume not at this meeting, but I'd be happy no. to have that conversation offline. Sure. Yeah, sure. And if that meets the approval of the commissioners, I'm looking for heads nodding there or the chief or whatever. Is that okay? Yeah, definitely good idea. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Good idea, Jay. Okay. And then the other room that was upstairs that I clarified with Dave Snow is at the back of the hallway, which I don't think any commissioner, at least I haven't gone down, but it's to the back and over to the left is a vacant room that was used for storage for district records. Is that the right um, room I'm talking about, Dave Snow? Yes, yes okay. it is. 
Yes. So that room right now has boxes in it that has old historic records of the district. What I'd ask Corey to do to cooperate and help with this remodeling or what, what's going on with, with El Monte, and also in line with what the management audit said, is to get those records out of that storage area, bring them into the copy room. We have empty file cabinets in there, store the records that have historical meaning back to 1939 in those file cabinets, and then we've got a records retention and destruction schedule, the ones that can be destroyed because all of the records are digitized and we use the digital records, uh, then being able to rid, rid ourselves of those uh, under the authority of Rob Quello uh, because an attorney has to sign off on the destruction of records. So does that sound like a feasible plan uh, to the commissioners? Makes sense to me. Okay, Yes. we're trying yes. to tidy up our records retention and really show and demonstrate our good faith and our efforts that our records are digital, they are properly stored. We do have respect for those that have historic significance um, and then the ones that have been many times duplicated that we can rid ourselves of those. And that way then Dave Snow, we can free up that room. You don't have to worry about it. We're trying to give you all the space we possibly can to make this the best home for our our firefighters and we love our firefighters. I, that goes to say. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you. And I hope the commissioners echo that sentiment. Okay. Any further questions or comments from the commissioners? There, there was one other that I had if no one else has, if I threw the uh, president, if I could intercede. Sure. So, um, I'm, I'm picking up on an email. There's been um, conversation between ARC and CERT ARC and those types of things. So we talked about the Wi-Fi a little bit, but there was also a question about installation of a ham radio antenna. Mm. And um, so I just kind of wanted to raise it similar to the point-to-point -point Wi-Fi that's being explored before the next meeting for the uh, ARC. Um, there was a suggestion of possibly where to locate a ham radio antenna. We've uh, communicated um, with a gentleman named, I believe it was Kevin or something, but the long story short is that we think that um, county communication has no issue with any possible interference from a ham radio antenna. And so if the commissioners would like, since I have people on site, I could bring back another project for that. It's not a big project by any means, but it would just be the installation and sort of us uh, managing the install of where that antenna would land. And then the commissioners can make a decision at the next meeting. Well, Is that helpful? Yes, I think that's, that makes good sense. Yeah, I would certainly recommend that as a volunteer. What about yeah. the rest of the commission? Yeah, Mr. Kearney need... has a comment. Yeah, do we need, excuse me, go ahead. I'm right. just going to so, ask. Um, in addition to placing the antenna um, someplace in the fire station, I assume that um, a coax cable is going to have to be routed someplace. So um, I would just want to make sure that the entire project is conceived, not just where the antenna is going to be placed. Uh, correct. It would be our intent to bring back a uh, uh, recommended site for the antenna and how to install it and a proposal for the installation. Effie, do you have a comment? Yeah, my comment was, uh, do we need Larry Kerr, uh, Carr rather, to be involved with this as the uh, head of all of the reconnaissance and the ham uh, installations? Should he be involved? Would be my question. Maybe Janice can answer that if Larry's standing by, that would be interesting to hear his comments. Duffy, if I can interrupt for a second, I think Neil has put a lot of work into that. Okay, okay great. Just so one of you that's involved with it be involved. Yeah. Terrific. That's not, terrific. Not that Larry couldn't be, but I think yeah. Neil has done a lot of the groundwork for this. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Chief Glass has a comment as well. Chief, go ahead. I just wanted to say that uh, to Dave Snow's point that, and um, Dave Stewart's point that Neil has been involved. We have his proposal. It was shared with us by uh, General Manager Logan. And so we'll, that was a great uh, kind of a path forward for us. And so that Dave can take to our vendor. We can get a quote and bring it back to the commission. And then you can, uh, if the commission decides they can choose to add the ham or they can do the Wi-Fi. And so we'll, we'll bring you back a presentation so that the commission can make an informed decision on the, on the path forward. Sounds good. And we definitely want to make sure we tie in with uh, the CERT members, as obviously they'll be the end users. Right. 
And, and she did a good 360 degree review of this. Um, Denise Gluhan, uh, Victoria Beebe, you work out there with the certs and you're at the ARC all the time. Does this seem to meet the needs that, that you foresee um, moving forward for the future? Denise, Victoria? This is Victoria, I yes, agreed. Okay. Yeah, and Victoria has been uh, kind of keeping that uh, that whole arc moving forward. So I'm glad this is getting up on a front a front item again. Thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you. Okay, and I actually have a question um, for County Council. Actually, Rob, this is for you. At our last meeting, we asked um, you to look into the district's contract with Central Fire District regarding payment for capital improvements to the El Money Station, which our district owns. Um, Will you please let us know what you determined? Uh, yes, I'm happy to do that. So uh, it is district property. You have the right to make any improvements and pay for any improvements to district property that you choose. Uh, the agreement with the Central Fire District does say that if the Central Fire District wants to make improvements, uh, it may do so with your approval. And if the Central Fire District uh, incurs the expense, the uh, capital still will belong to the district, but if the agreement between Central Fire and Los Altos Hills Fire uh, County Fire District terminates, then the uh, uh, Los Altos will be required to reimburse sort of the uh, depreciated value of those improvements to Central Fire. So the, the short answer is um, if Central Fire wants to pay for something because it's to the benefit of its firefighters, it has the right to do so with your approval and it becomes a Los Altos asset and Central Fire is not entitled to any reimbursement unless the agreement's terminated, then it would get the depreciated value of reimbursement. If however, Central Fire makes a recommendation for something and says, but we'd love it, but only if you pay for it, then you as a commission have an opportunity to, to decide if you wanna uh, incur the expense or not incur the expense. You can't make Central Fire pay for something, um, but if they do pay for it, and, and justifiably so because it's for their benefit, um, it, it's still your asset and then um, um, they wouldn't be entitled to any reimbursement unless the agreement terminates. All right, Great. very good. Excellent. Thank you, Rob. Very good. Dave, I think, Dave Snow, in your proposal, I'd like to add, if you could um, add, begin adding a funding proposal. Well, how, how are you going to propose that this these capital improvements are funded? Very good. I can bring back uh, that information with the next report next month. Great. Thank you, Dave. Any public comment or any question of the commissioners regarding what Rob Coelho just communicated. Excellent. Great. Is there any public comment on this item? All right, hearing none, we will now move to item 15, which is the successor strategic plan report. All right, um, item 15, um, 15A memorandum, um, uh, 15, excuse me, 15A memorandum report and item 15B preliminary chart of goals for strategic uh, successor strategic plan. Consultant Scott, please provide the report and the preliminary chart of goals. Great. Thank you. Good evening, President Warren, members of the commission, uh, staff, and members of the public. It's good to be back again to discuss the district successor strategic plan. I am Marcy Scott. A consultant assisting the district in creating the plan during this unusual time um, when we're in a global pandemic, which substantially limits our ability to work in large groups and in the midst of a discussion about consolidation of services at the county level. So with all of that, um, our last discussion in September was a different discussion. Um, and now after October 6th, we have a, 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 a little more information, but still a lot of questions as we've heard already tonight. Um, so with that said, um, following Chief Glass's presentation about operational issues, 
I think at this point we can step back a few paces and look at the big picture of where the district's headed over the course of the next two years. And if we could start, Sarah, um, with the uh, mission statement, if everybody can see this, I just thought this would help frame our state of mind. The mission of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District is to protect the lives, property, and environment within the district it serves from fires, disasters, medical emergencies, or other incidents through education, prevention, protection, and emergency response services, and to be responsible for the financial stewardship of district taxpayer funds. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so this is what we're looking toward um, for the next two years. Um, and if we could move on to the district boundary map, Sarah, as the next item to look at. Um, I thought this visual would also help us just look at, again, the big picture of the area the district serves. If you follow the left border, which is the west side of the district, you can see that it is adjacent to open space, a huge amount of open space here. Um, and then the, the 280 sort of splits the district in the middle and on the right side is, is residential. Um, and, and, well, sorry, they both have uh, residential on both sides of the district, but really there is a lot of open space surrounding the district. And um, we have a number of programs in place now that help residents understand what the threats are and take actions to protect their home and their uh, yard. Um, and I think we have a new urgency to think about all of this open space that surrounds the district. So um, that's sort of the, the foundation I'd like us to be thinking about as we talk about this particular item. Um, thank you, Sarah. Uh, so the purpose of tonight's discussion is much more focused than our last discussion. And this is really on the goals and objectives. Um, and this is really the key element of the strategic plan. This is not the whole strategic plan, but really how we see uh, specific steps that can be taken in the next two years to meet the district's mission statement. So what I thought I would do to start is let's look at the goals one through six. And let me just give you a quick overview. And then I would like for us to discuss each column um, with its related objectives. So with uh, goal number one is, is really about the guiding document for the district. Um, this is the Community Wildfire Protection Plan. Um, we are Annex 4 and the district also has an addendum guide specifically for residents to help them understand this document. Um, this is um, really guides the programs at the district um, with specific information about uh, the current fire science concepts and approaches. And moving on, goal number two really relates to the county management audit and how the district may incorporate feedback. Now, this obviously has been um, a fluid issue and um, some good points brought up this evening um, from our public comment with Mr. Milkey and Mr. Epstein, as well as commissioner comments. So I think we wanna speak to that more directly when we get to this particular goal. Uh, goals three and four are really about specific programs and assets. And these are specific activities that the district provides to help keep the community safe. Um, goal number three focuses on assessing and reducing hazards, while goal number four addresses uh, assets related to water. The district owns 540 hydrants, but not the water infrastructure they are attached to. 
so there are some opportunities in the future. There are also some questions in this area, as we've already heard. Uh, goal number five is about regional work, and it's about outreach, communication, education, um, and specific programs uh, such as the CERT program um, and using technology to improve our communication. Uh, and finally, goal number six is about internal operations and adaptability and flexibility, which are two key concepts for moving forward. And these are about the organization's alignment and goals and staffing, et cetera. So with that said, um, if we can move back to goal number one and look at this column um, and talk a little bit about the Community Wildfire Protection Plan, um, there are uh, several objectives. I guess um, if you don't mind shifting the page, Sarah, uh, we'll start it. Um, we have one more goal below, sorry. Let me start back up at eight. A is about um, using this to develop uh, programs and have it inform our programs. Um, in order to update this plan, uh, we will need to engage with stakeholders in the community. Um, objective C is about aligning with the county plan. Now, I understand the county revised their plan in June of 2019. Uh, that's fairly recent, so we would want to incorporate any new material there as well as um, any a study or plan that LAFCO may be doing. Um, objective D is about collaborating with our partners for best practices on fire science principles, as well as striving to be a best practice leader in the region. Um, so I, I'd like to open it up to the commissioners and see if there are any comments, thoughts, um, some additions, changes, deletions on this particular uh, goal number one. Um, Good. Yeah, uh, Duffy speaking. I just would like to know that the CWPP plan that we'll be working on is the most current pieces of information. I've heard that there are some tremendous errors in the CWPP. So I want to make sure we start with the, uh, you know, a level sort of uh, well uh, achieved uh, document. So how could we go about doing that? Is that something that Jay can advise, Denise can advise? Or is there some other, you know, with our fire marshal or whomever is the leader in the county that uh, looks at that CWPP program and make sure that's very accurate and up to date? Does yeah. anybody have any other insights or comments? Yeah, I, I can speak first, uh, Commissioner Price. So the CWPP Annex 4 is the original one that was presented to yeah. the district. It needs to be updated. And that's precisely what these community meetings would do and the, and the collaboration. Great with partners is to say because there's all these tables and charts in the back and quite and uh quite frankly i've gone through some of them and said well, we don't do that you know mm -hmm. we don't do controlled burns let's say yeah. so those have to come out and new ones have to come in but there wouldn't be a expert that would do it it would be a collaboration and the way the cwpp was devised and this is uh through the state is for it to be regional and local mm -hmm. local local that's why each of the counties, each of the agencies in the county has their own annex so they okay. can tailor it to their own individual needs. It just right. needs to be updated. And thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, how would we do that though? This would be a task group that would be put together with members of our commission with working with the county or how do you envision it? Mm -hmm. I envision it to be a task force uh, mm -hmm. open to the public and have community um, members there certainly fire department and right. critically important and fire safe council because they're okay. one of our premier vendors and they do this kind of work throughout the county and throughout the state um, cal fire i don't know who all the task force members would be but that mm -hmm. could be put together very quickly uh -huh. then the cwpp understand the the specific topo topography of the, the district and whether those maps that are in the cwpp are indeed accurate because I've yeah. heard various perspectives that they're not accurate, and yet right. they look as though they were accurate. Mm -hmm. 
Very good. Okay, and that would be, yeah, my input. Go ahead. That's great. And so, um, Jay, would that be a, a task force would be um, uh, created by the commission? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can put some specific language in here as as a step in this process. Um, so I Mark, also, you see that developing then when we start doing that, that becomes the work plan with the yeah. deliverables and the tasks. And what kind of a timeline do you see? I mean, these are these are right now or, organized in goals one through six uh, in no specific timeline order. We would have to assign a timeline when we'd want to see one accomplished within the next three months, one accomplished in the next six months. And then two would be some, I mean, we have to assign some kind of a timeline, right? Or well, do we need not to? Well, I think what we do is to the objectives, we assign timelines, but work around it. So yeah. that'd be the number. I don't think you assign timelines to the goals, but you do to the yeah. objectives and the work. Right. Okay. Sounds good. And I think you'll see there are not a lot of specifics in this proposed work product. And that's what we would like to talk about tonight. And I think we heard from Commissioner Tyson at the last meeting, uh, the smart approach to uh, writing goals and objectives. And, and that entails that they are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So um, to the extent that we can apply those principles and talk about that tonight, I think that would be very helpful. I would also say to some extent, this has to be a living document because mm -hmm. things are gonna continue to a change uh, right. and we'll need to make adjustments as we go. But we would like to put um, any specifics here that we can. And so okay. this is really helpful. Um, let me see if I had anything else. I would also say, Right. I know uh, from the various wildfires that have occurred, there there is incredible learning that comes out of each of those experiences. Right. And I don't know if there's a way um, that we can ensure we're capturing that learning as it comes down. I, I don't I don't know if um, Chief Glass has any advice on that. Yeah, I apologize. I have my hand up for a little bit here. I'm just uh, I just want to clarify a couple of things with the CWPP. One, this is supposed to be initially in a living document. It was uh, at some point it it would have been adopted by this board of commissioners. The version that I have shows that it was revised in 2019, June of 2019. So I just want to make sure you know, to Commissioner Price's point that we're we're looking at the most accurate version, and I okay. do believe that that did have something to do with the local hazard mitigation, high fire severity zones, and the state FRAP map uh, that was overlaid in 2016. But then the hills, uh, uh, there was a movement to have that removed or not, not put into place. And so there was some uh, discrepancy with the mapping. And that, that's, I wasn't directly involved with that, but that is the history that I recall. So just to make sure that, you know, to General Manager Logan's point that if we're going to have a task force working forward to look at those mitigation strategies that are outlined within the CWPP, those are purely recommendations. And so while there is things in there that live fire is a recommendation for the commission to look at and if it is appropriate or, or fitting for that particular treatment modality for vegetation reduction or mitigation, then, then we would go forward and, and look at that or for the commission could if they so cho choose. Um, yeah. The other option is it opens the door to grant funding to be able to look at some of these uh, mitigation strategies, you know, uh, mechanical chipping or uh, mitigation uh, strategies such as the shaded fuel break projects that have been going on in Page Mill with the cooperation with Fire State Council. So again, uh, uh, we would be in full support of partnering with the district on this and uh, we would be happy to be as part of the task force. Uh, it was alluded to earlier that Santa Clara County Fire Department, while has become such a major component of our business that we are repurposing a battalion chief uh, mm -hmm. that will go before the board uh, in the, I wanna say the next uh, November 3rd. I can't have a calendar in front of me, I apologize, but we submitted that. And that'll be a battalion chief of wildfire, uh, pre-fire engineering and wildfire resiliency. And so that would be the person uh, we're gonna go an open competitive um, uh, 
recruitment for that so that we can definitely find somebody that has that within their uh, resume that they have experience with vegetation management and also dealing with the strategies post fire so that we're, we're well rounded and able to address that. There was also some discussion about uh, the wildfire proposal that was submitted to the county two years ago. Uh, members of the public had reached out uh, this evening and brought that forward. And again, we stand ready to implement that program in any of the communities and, and jurisdictions. Uh, and all we would need is a, an opportunity to sit down and talk about which pieces of that fit best for the Los Altos Hills Fire District specifically. Uh, it was a regional model that could be definitely tailored to suit the needs of the district as, as we see fit. And I, um, in full support of uh, the goals that are outlined within this strategic objective. And I think it's, it's a, a lofty goal to be an industry setting best practice um, district. And we're we're right. glad to be part of that. Good, thank you. That's great. Sounds like a great resource partner. The new- Definitely. I wanna just ask Chief uh, J uh, Glass, where do you see, I have kind of a uh, interesting question here. Uh, I'm interested in knowing where do you see the robot Colossus coming into effect? <laughs> is this something that we could fund or get a grant for, or you know, be one of the initial uh, districts that use this because it may be very helpful and useful. So where would it fit into the program under goal one, goal two, goal three, or goal four? Uh, I'm assuming you're referring to that little yellow robot that was fighting fire down in Los Angeles. I, I didn't yeah. know that name. The name of it is Colossus, and it actually was used in uh, Paris for the Notre Dame fire. Uh, Did you know that? Yeah. I didn't know what uh, you know, technology is amazing nowadays, and I definitely yeah. think it plays a role. Uh, but again, yes. way down the line, that's actually after the fire starts. And I think what we're trying to focus on here is is how to prevent fire and how to, right. how to limit that spread. But uh, you know, uh, anything that allows us to keep firefighters safer. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I'm, I'm a proponent of it. If that's something the district wants to look into, you know, we're, we're happy to sit and talk about okay. it. Okay, sounds good. Okay, thank you. And Duffy, me. you stole my idea. Oh, okay. I did not. Did I, I saw the robot first. <laughs> Darn. Hey, I have another one. I'll, I'll share with you later, George, okay? I have another friend that is a um, marine engineer from MIT, and he basically has invented something to suck up water out of the ocean. Okay, and put it in a huge airplane. If I did, I ever send it to you, Chief Glass? I don't think I did. I sent it to yeah. Chief Bowden. Yeah, I, think I, did, I did see it where he drags it behind the plane, right? They fly right. Out of the water. Yeah, and it's exactly. Up. Yes, I did exactly. see it. Right. Maybe. Okay, sorry. Sorry to digress here. A little levity. Other commission comments about this item number one, the CWPP? No. Okay. No, no. Just, just to, in agreement with what you said. Uh, let's let's develop a, a schedule and a plan. Let's let's keep momentum. We have 130 plus people who've spoken up. They're energized, uh, and I yeah. bet a lot of people would like to get involved if we had a place to uh, to to put them and steer them, direction to steer them. Great. Okay. Very good. Okay, so I think this item needs a little more specific uh, added, which I will work up. Um, let's move along to goal number two, if there aren't any other comments. Goal number two, again, relates to the county management audit. Um, what I heard tonight, and it sounds like um, General Manager Logan has a, a, a write-up that might inform this particular item with some specific questions that need to be addressed to help the district understand how to move forward. Um, and uh, that document may be helpful, Jay, to add in a few more specifics here. Okay. Um, these are fairly general, um, I think, um, uh, let's see, we have um, the, and then the last item, um, oh, actually I should probably walk through them because you can't see them on your screen here. A is review and implement the recommendations. Um, B is to engage county council services to advise the district. C is manage district resources, assets, and funds 
Um, within the county audit and procurement guidelines, D is to allocate um, and manage the fiscal resources consistent with the district mission and strategic plan. E is follow county procurement policies and procedures and records retention guidelines. F, deliver monthly status reports to county committees. As we've discussed, that's expected um, through next October. So on this item, um, would it be helpful to list out some of the key questions uh, that are pending um, in terms of um, some boundaries for expenditures, what kinds of capital expenditures. Uh, any other suggestions or thoughts uh, from the commission, Commissioner Tyson? Well, I just unmuted, I didn't raise my hand, but uh, that's fine. You know, this is one where I didn't really know what to do because they're kind of a little bit of agreeing to do follow the audit and that's what we're going to do. I don't even know what to say about them like, other than our day-to-day -day operations. This is more like just operational excellence and compliance with the audit. And let's make sure we're following all of the requirements. And I don't know really what else to say about it. Yes, and I think the commission wants to be clear. That's the commission's intent and approach moving forward. Um, Okay, any other comments or thoughts? Commissioner Kearney has a comment. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, I second what George just said. It doesn't seem like a strategic goal or objective. Mm -hmm. It seems like a standard operating procedure. Honestly, when I read it, I thought this is a goal. This is just an SOP. Okay. Um, okay. So I could, I could add some comments there. Um, I think that this, to me, when I read number two, what I would use it for is always a lens when an idea or a notion or a program or an idea comes up. Um, I would use it as the guidelines. I would use this when I go this goal in front of Hewlett and FGOC and management audit and say, we do all these good things, but we also do them within the guidelines of the management audit. So it, it's like, a lens that then permeates all the other kinds of activities. So it gives us some structure and some guidelines. So I see it as a guideline goal, uh, a structure goal. That's, that's my perspective on it. it. It would give me a lot of um, validation and talking points to have this kind of in my toolkit um, as a general manager. And I would think for the commissioners too, as you talk to the, to the public, let's say you're talking to someone and they say, why aren't we, we using our, our, our old tree removal program and take down these trees? Well, you would go back and talk about some of these, these items here on this goal. Does that help clarify any of this? Thanks, Jay. I think, I think that is a, a good perspective. Um, what would you think if we had some language under goal number six, if we sort of combined two and six? Uh, goal six is about the organization and being adaptable and flexible. Um, if we had some language there, an objective that you could use as your lens, as your descriptor. I, I wouldn't combine the two. I think the organizational structure really is a strategic, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, root for this organization. Um, I'm certainly open to number two, if, uh, especially if Jay feels that any activity uh, can therefore be put under one of our major strategic goals. And certainly there will be efforts that go towards making sure that you know, we are following the audit, certainly for the next year and especially the two years. So I'm not offended by having this as a goal, though I recognize it is more of an operational nature. Um, it also lets us talk to the county in terms of saying we are really taking this seriously. This is a topmost priority for us to show that those audit recommendations are uh, forefront in our mind. Um, but uh, I can see the argument both ways, but I wouldn't combine it with six. I'd, I'd rather keep it, even if it's an operational goal, it doesn't require a whole lot of new thinking behind it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it certainly advertises that we mean to be a really good participant in what the county wants from us. 
Thank you. I second your motion. I, I think Roger is making a lot of sense. And, and you know, I realized I might have sounded critical about this, but, but I didn't mean to be because it's important for us to articulate our adherence and our acceptance of this, uh, this audit we went through and also that we're going to run this way. When I've done goal settings, you know, a lot of, some of them are very specific and operational. Some of them are just, we're gonna run this place really well and mm -hmm. nobody's gonna get hurt is a perfectly good way of saying things. And then other goals are things where you, you do your strategic leaps or your, your game changing things. So it's okay to have a kind of business as usual and, yeah. and let's just say this is business as a, the new usual, and I'm okay with it being kind of nebulous mm -hmm. and, and vague and, and, and not, not, not that adventurous, really. Okay. Marcy, well, can, I, can I ask a question? Are we, you're going to open this up to the public. Maybe the public would want to weigh in somewhere along the line. We want just the commissioners now and then the public later. Is that how you want to run this? Absolutely. Let's let's get some public comment. I think it, it might be helpful if we all walk through each of these goals on their own and talk about them and uh -huh. then open it up. Would that work? Yeah, that okay. would just so that they know if they're standing absolutely. by absolutely. Yeah, chomping at the bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, and I guess the good news is you've already accomplished goal 2B. So you're <laughs> off to a strong start. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, any other comments on number two? I, I, I guess I heard on that, let's keep number two. Um, I can uh, look at the objectives again and, and finesse them a little bit further. Mm -hmm. um, have this be a, an aspirational goal, a directional goal for our, uh, as we move forward? Um, okay. Um, then we move into goal number three, the integrated hazardous fuel program, uh, fuel reduction program, um, really has been a, a great focus the last few years in terms of creating programs that help um, educate our residents and help them take specific actions to make themselves and their families safer and the community safer. Um, let me just walk through these rather quickly. Um, yeah. A is um, is a statement that the pro the programs here at the district will be based on fire science um, and um, certainly continued learning as as we learn from the fire experts. Um, we have a couple of examples there. Uh, B is. Um, specifically about the home admission zone programs. So this would be continuing to partner with our regional organizations to support these inspections. Um, and then we have a sub bullet here, which would be um, to consider incentives um, to um, help um, motivate homeowners to participate in these and then to take the follow-up actions that come out of these inspections. And the other sub bullet here under B would be to create a certificate of completion of this hazard inspection program for residents to provide to their homeowner's insurance carrier, which may um, end up in um, a reduced um, insurance cost. Uh, so that's a, a real value for, for homeowners. Absolutely, great. Um, Next would be support a survey of open space areas for fuels and fire break projects um, and identify and prioritize fire risk threats in the district, um, uh, fuel ladders. I, I know there's been some work and discussion about uh, road uh, transport and evacuation routes. Um, item E is about seeking feedback to continue to enhance and it's expand programs. And F is about using technology. Um, and some examples might be using GIS for brush chipping and shaded fuel breaks. And the last item is working with regional partners to evaluate construction of shaded fuel breaks and fire breaks where open space is adjacent to district boundaries. Um, 
I apologize, that's numbered as, with a B, but it should be um, G. Um, and this again is looking a little more regionally about partnering around the open space areas and taking some specific steps there to start um, working toward uh, more resilience. So um, on goal number three, which has a lot of elements, um, talking about technology and specific programs, is there any feedback or comments from the commissioners? Well, I personally, Duffy speaking again, I don't really wanna be the only one talking on this, but I think this is the meatiest part of our strategic plan and think we need to really uh, move that as a priority. I mean, I, I would rearrange this whole thing almost to make that numer uno, but basically I think that's so important that somehow we get moving on that uh, and start implementing various, and we already are, and there are certain things that we're already doing on that plan. So, and I'd be interested in Denise's uh, feelings about where we go with it also. And I hope the other commissioners see that. You know, normally we would be holding this in an open session where we could all sort of groove together on these things. So it makes it a little more difficult with Zoom technology here, trying to um, make this an exciting uh, part of our program. But basically I think that number three, that goal is gonna be really critical to everything we go forward with in terms of the regional outreach to our neighbors. And by the way, I think George hit on something with having had a hunt and I had 136 names I took down from that talk the other day. I think we should definitely implement some kind of a massive big program where we call out everybody at some point soon and share all of this with them in terms of what we're doing because we have that live group right now ready to help to assist and to be part of the program. So that's my two cents. Duffy, can I respond to that really quickly if you don't mind? Um, sure. Martha? Okay, so <clears throat> the order in which these are laid out was very definitely considered. Okay. So you're right, number three is the meatiest. Um, it's kind of in the mean of the, of the, of the, uh, of the bell-shaped curve. But mm -hmm. the reason it's in number three position is because mm -hmm. the way in which we know what integrated hazardous fuel reduction program we're going to do is over because of number one. It's got to fit within the CWPP as it's revised. That's what gives it its legitimacy. Then after, after number one, then it's got to go through the lens or the scrutiny of the management audit. Then okay. it becomes validated as number three. So for example, obviously an integrated hazardous fuel reduction program could be chopping down trees on private property. That's where the district was before. But that probably wouldn't, wouldn't work under the scrutiny if you go through number one because CWPP doesn't really talk about that. And certainly number two, the management audit said it's not the best and highest use of funds and it was not done aligned with the CWPP. So you see how one and two helps define what is going to end up in number three when we get to the action plan and the work plan and the tasks okay. and the timeline. Right. So that's how it's laid out. Okay. In All right. Way. Thank you, Jay. Thanks. Clarifying that. I appreciate it. So, so my, uh, I agree with that, and I, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, what I'm questioning is this as the, as the venue or the vehicle for, for what we're trying to do. I think it fits for, say, a strategy and a priority and articulating the direction you want to go. But this, this is like a battle plan, okay? <laughs> and it gets more and more detailed and granular. And that's, that's not really for this group right here. This is, this is I think, something that that we find another way to do that, maybe under Jay's leadership, and we uh, we we spread out and come up with with project ideas that then we have we have so many we can't possibly do them all. That's what I think we're all aiming for, and then we prioritize them based on a methodology. That's the way I normally go yeah. about my 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 pharmaceutical work. And and for an example, with all these people that might be volunteering, I'm part of the open space committee uh, in the town. And open space is only about eight people. Every year, people fan out and look for stinkwort. Okay, stinkwort is a, is a hazardous, flammable weed that's very noxious and easily spreading. And these individuals will go out and map the areas and then provide that map to the town and the town does the spraying. So I'm thinking we should come up with collaborations or efforts like that where we can take advantage of people's enthusiasm, getting on our trails, 
and yet provide some structure so that it's not not um, it's it's not confusing about how we go about turning that into real action. So let me ask a question about that. Um, these programs, um, this this item lists programs that are currently in place. Um, there may be four or five programs that are currently in place and um, they don't have specific goals. For example, let's look at the home inspections. Um, I think that program is relatively new and I think this year we completed uh, the number that were projected. Is that right, Jay? We had estimated around mm -hmm. uh, 55 maybe. Yes. Um, and um, so, so it may be helpful in, in a, a future dial down to have some estimates. How many do we plan to do over the course of a year? Do we want to increase that number with more um, communication? Um, so I think that one of the overarching questions with tonight's discussion is, how do we balance how much detail to put in here versus in the future, the staff's gonna have to figure out a work plan, um, again, that is attainable from our SMART goals that we can actually do. Um, and so it sounds like um, maybe Commissioner Tyson, there's too much in here and we should narrow it down, um, but it will serve as a guide for the staff in the future to bring back more specifics in future months. Is that is that accurate? Is that consistent with what you feel? I think so. I'm never exactly sure. I think so. I mean, I look at number five and that's where we're engaging and collaborating with the community. So I can see that this could mush over into there too. So I'm not, I'm not really a purist about these things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I believe that some of these um, uh, we need to do a little bit more coordination with, with, uh, with county fire as well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, make sure they're heavily involved. And, um, and then, you know, that's kind of where Denise comes in and, and, and coordinate as well. Um, and just make sure that everybody's on the same page. I can't stress that enough, you know, it'd be, we'd be remiss not to have the fire department play an integral role in what we're doing here and, and, and signing off to make sure, like I said, we're all on the same page. And so I would like to see more involvement uh, from, you know, from, uh, from County Fire on this as well and just make sure we're all working together. Uh, Commissioner Kearney had a comment um, and Chief Glass, I know you had your hand raised earlier but I didn't get a chance to interject. If you have something you'd like to add after, please feel free. Uh, right. So the the sorry for the technical difficulty. So the the question I had it, it sort of struck me when I looked at number three um, and number four um, was that it seemed like our strategic goal is to is to implement projects and programs that we've currently conceived and sort of have you know budgeted and thought about and have already partially implemented. But I didn't see any, and I and I put it to the group um, and the public. Does it make sense to have as a strategic goal things that looking for things that we haven't thought about yet, mm -hmm. right? So, what about um, you know what about a public warning system? What about uh, chief uh, the fire chief? I think at, at one of his submissions to the uh, board of supervisors suggested that there may be a utility in having a um, a relationship with uh, Palo Alto Fire for the foothill mm -hmm. station. Yeah. So they just, you know, I didn't, you know, like George, who was looking for a place in here to find, and you could find places to maybe figure that out under organizational flexibility or, but it just seems to me that that, that we should have as a strategical something that's forward looking. Um, mm -hmm. Not that these aren't forward looking, but more um, programs, uh, TBD. I think, that's a great point. And I think that that would be expanding out to a more regional view, looking at that station eight that is um, 
operated during high fire damage uh, day, fire danger <laughs> days. Um, right, excuse me. Um, and maybe the district wants to partner with Palo Alto and increase that um, operation. I, I, I don't know. I think that is a, a great suggestion and it seems like it would fit under this number three because it has to do with um, the operations aspect of it. Um, and, and maybe that also kind of fits in with um, items C and D on this, which is really looking to the open space areas and the fuel ladders, road, um, egress, ingress, um, so let me um, make a note. Yeah, one other comment, and Commissioner Vaughn can speak to this obviously much better than I can, but this seems, this is very proactive in terms of, you know, preparing and reducing the likelihood that fire will happen. But it seems to me that it should also be one of our strategic goals to think about how we can optimize and make more efficient and better our response. Mm. And that's and that's consistent with developing hydrant maintenance, right? So that's um, that's a response issue, not a you know prevention issue. Yes. Yeah, Marcy, I wanted Duffy again. I wanted to just say that the station eight fits in nicely with our goal number five to engage yeah. and collaborate with mm -hmm. the community. Look yeah. at that. You basically okay. talk about other or regional organizations to invite common interests and participated initiatives together that strengthen the community resiliency and transparency. So that's kind of that. It, it, in other words, it could be in all these different places, but I think there you've already identified it in a location that we can work together. Also, you know, collaboration with Los Altos, with the city of Los Altos, with various projects that we could, you know, uh, be co and we already have in a number of uh, instances for preparation and fire prevention. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, thank you. I didn't, I didn't wanna step on any of the commissioner's uh, train of thoughts here, but, but I, it sounds like the direction of the conversation is moving uh, in a very good direction. And I tend to agree with everything that's being said by all the commissioners. Um, some of the things in items three, like uh, 3C and 3F, and 3G are, are all could be lumped into one topic. I think you want to leverage technology to strategically target uh, hazards within the fire districts area so that you can target a fuels mitigation project. But then I also totally agree that when the fuels mitigation fails, we do need to have a robust response. And that's where we can take a look at some of the options. A lot of the ideas being tossed around are, are with Palo Alto, which is an excellent partner. Um, and we did something like that with Saratoga early in our um, working with the Saratoga fire mm -hmm. district where yeah. we take one of their firefighters, put them on our engine, put one of their firefighters on their engine. You can look at some option that where you put the apparatus in the station and one or two firefighters from Palo Alto with one or two firefighters from uh, county and then the cost gets split and both uh, agencies benefit mutually from the response and neither one is taking the lion's share of the, of the cost, but you have the ability to flex the operational response during red flag warnings or fire watch conditions uh, into Palo Alto, and then of course into the fire district if needed. Uh, and that, that con continues to support the county's mutual aid system and allows the district to be able to put something back into the system to share uh, with its neighbors. And then of course, receive the benefit from the other agencies as they begin to share resources back to the district in their time of need. Chief Glass, I think it's terrific. Your uh, contributions to this uh, are excellent and we need to continue to rely on you for more. We're not taking too much of your time to do that, are we? Or could we come back to you and no, have you help us more? Absolutely not, Commissioner. This is why I'm here. I'm happy to be engaged and participate. Yes. But you know, the spirited discussion about the commissioners, but I'm happy to provide that, that um, you know, operational hands-on perspective. And again, I terrific. wish I could a little bit more to the fuels mitigation piece, but that's still something that's, you know, that is new for Central Fire District, right? We haven't mm -hmm. been involved in that other yeah. than the with Fire Safe Council, uh, which we've been, you know, one of the founding uh, partners with them and sit on, sit on their, their council. Uh, and then of course, with the participation with CWPP. So again, it's, it's new. Uh, and then recently with Chief Bowden's uh, most recent county-wide wildland recommendations. So uh, some of that I believe can be leveraged here to support the district as needed. Terrific. 
Uh, we have a comment from Alan. If you want to entertain public comments now. Good. Go ahead, Alan. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I'd certainly like to reinforce what Chief Glass has to say. Um, um, the fire experts in the room are Santa Clara County Fire Department, and I think the district needs to leverage that expertise to the, to the best of its ability. Um, the one thing that I heard clearly from residents is, yeah, um, I don't want to offend the open space people, but you know, you know, if we run a bulldozer up and down the whole western boundary of the town, that's probably the most uh, repeated thing that I've, I've heard. Um, about how, how to reduce the likelihood of fire entertaining or, or coming into the, to the district. Um, uh, I would really like to see a much more proactive effort you know, with the open space people, assuming the fire, fire department believes that's an appropriate thing to do. But um, uh, that's certainly for, first and foremost on most residents' mind. How do we keep the fire from from coming from you know, uh, Santa Cruz and other places in, into our, our area. The other yeah. comment I'd like to make is what Mr. Tyson said about smart and specificity. The, um, there's just a lot of, um, there's not any specific objectives here in terms of time period and, and, and the things that we wish to accomplish and the priorities for, for doing them. And, you know, all these things say identify and support and lead and seek and use and so forth. But, you know, this isn't a 10 year plan. This is a three year plan. If you don't start immediately, yeah, um, you're not going to accomplish any of these things. And so I really uh, would challenge uh, the organization to add a lot of sophisticity, maybe not in this version right now, but very quickly um, yeah. so that everyone knows what the work plan is. Thank you very much. Great. Okay. Thank you for those comments. Um, you know, um, can I ask a question? Doesn't the district have um, uh, some space on the western side of the district? There is a, a, a vacant lot that is owned by the district. And I don't know if there's been discussion about purposing that, that land. Um, should that be reflected on this plan as a as a discussion for the future? Jay, you want to give them my two cents on this? <laughs> Let me just say that that lot has been held and we've owned that lot for many, many years and use it primarily. Uh, we rent it out for construction purposes over the years oh. uh, for people to store their equipment there and have you know used it many different ways. And originally it was that lot, just so for Marcy's edification, uh, Jay, that if you wanna comment about how we're using that lot now and what's gonna happen with it. Well, I mean, the, the lot's in a very strategic location. Um, we need to talk with the fire department as to the utilization of the lot for fire pre prevention and protection purposes and also uh, on the northern boundary of the district, how to strengthen that, that area. But those are all drill down questions that we can get into uh, once we establish what the goals and the objectives are. That's just, that's, that's mm -hmm. one of the activities that would go along with a goal or objective. Right. Now okay. that would be a district ac ac asset. It yeah. is, it is uh, one of the findings coming out of the Board of Supervisors meeting. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, very good. I would say if there aren't any other comments specifically on number three, jump into number four, which is really, uh, again, more specific about the hydrant, um, the hydrant fire flow and pipeline resiliency. Um, Again, there are a number of questions in this arena, and so the objectives are rather vague um, <laughs> for that reason. Um, except for I, um, objective C um, states continue to utilize educational videos to educate the public, which um, has started recently um, and, and uh, can continue. Um, 
specific thoughts or comments on this particular item? Well, don't we, I think that it's very clear that we're waiting to find out if we can, uh, you know, pay for the repairs mm -hmm. that are needed. And that's up to Rob to help us figure that all out. And I think that's covered under another section here. Engage County Council to advise the district under goal number two. So mm -hmm. he just has to let us know, you know, that we can move forward. And uh, that was one of the things in the audit that was mm -hmm. uh, considered yeah. to be mismanagement. And we basically have refuted that and basically uh, work that all out. So now we're willing to do what we can do to make sure we do things correctly and according to the procurement guidelines that the county sets out for us. So um, Jay, do you have anything to add to that or George to the number four? Defer to George. George, you have any comments? Uh, no, uh, we, we have things we'd like to do and we just need to make okay. sure we understand what our parameters are. Correct. Right. Um, if you look at number four, the bold is purposefully done. And that is what we, what the district does is it develops services for hydrant maintenance, repair and location. And if you think right now when a, when a hydrant gets whacked by a vehicle or somehow damaged, we yeah. repair it uh, immediately as quickly right. as we can. That's what Jeff Tarantino and, and his consulting engineering group does. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely a stand up feature of the district. The other questions we're waiting for more enlightenment and information on so we can purpose our funds in a way that's appropriate. So I think number four okay. stands on its own. Great. Okay. Helen has a comment on number four. Okay. Thank you. Um, my recommendation would be to get out of the hydrant maintenance business. <laughs> I would uh, see if our district has no expertise in that area. There aren't any other fire departments that are responsible for the maintenance of high hydrants in, in, the, in the county. I would uh, approach Parisma Hills Water District about taking responsibility for maintaining the hydrants under some type of con contractual arrangement or um, initial payoff. But I just think it's a distraction that the uh, fire department, really, fire district really doesn't have expertise in. Thank you. Yeah, I would, uh, from the jurisdiction I've come from, the fire departments have always maintained um, fire hydrants, and that's you know, including cleaning and flushing and things like that. And it's a great uh, familiarity for the fire department to know the locations of the hydrants, uh, any sort of obstructions and things like that. So it's actually more common than one would think. Um, unless it's like heavy maintenance and, and where there's a repair where the hydrant actually has to be removed or parts have to be replaced. But it's pretty common, you know, in our jurisdiction, uh, my, my previous jurisdiction, you know, even things like blue dots and, you know, location for the hydrants because the fire department, you know, they really need to know uh, mm -hmm. the location of those, those hydrants and make sure they actually work. And I think that the, I think Cal Water and, and some of the other uh, jurisdictions have some sort of uh, testing in the sense of, you know, checking water pressure and things like that with a pitot gauge, um, where it's more involved testing, but as far as like, you know, flushing them and, you know, yearly maintenance, um, it's typically mm -hmm. something the fire department does. So I would, mm -hmm. I would continue to, uh, with that practice, because I think it's, 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 it's good. So. If I, if I could just comment, I, I wasn't talking about the, that type of maintenance. I was talking about, you know, when a, when a truck drives into the hydrant um, and it has to be repaired, um, the water district has all the expertise and knowledge about how to do that. It just seems inappropriate to make the district hire consultants and do all the rest of it when they have expertise in that area. Thank you. Gotcha. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, very good. We'll move along to item five, which is engaging and collaborating with community volunteers and agencies. And again, this is a, a real area of focus um, to identify opportunities. And again, we can be more specific maybe in 5A um, to specifically mention um, Palo Alto, Los Altos, um, to explore some opportunities there. Uh, 
Item B is about uh, collaborating with the Los Altos Hills town um, and to continue to improve in communication. Um, C is uh, addressing the CERT program and the ham operator activities. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier tonight about the antenna um, and uh, continuing to grow and support those programs. D is about the ARC and um, uh, connectivity. We spoke about also tonight, there, there could be some other specific actions under this uh, item D. Um, e is talking about use of the website and trying to drive more traffic to the website to use as a reference. Um, I think more and more people learned during the CZU fire to go to the website as a resource for current information. F uh, speaks to communication tools and uh, utilizing new technology to support programs. And then G is about early notification advisories and finding ways to expand in that area. Um, thoughts or comments about engaging in collaboration in terms of the goal or the specific objectives? We have a couple comments from the public. Uh, Neil, followed by Dave. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I think under, I mean, I think everything in here is good, but under collaboration, I think there are some items that are a little bit more meaty. Uh, thinking of the town, for instance, there's mm -hmm. the wooey issue. There's the issue of road safety uh, with all the trees overhanging the roads. I think that's something where, you know, chainsaws could be uh, involved, right? Uh, town ordinances. Uh, I think the town's fire ordinance when it comes to um, uh, what's required for defensible space is pretty vague. Um, so I've got a whole laundry list, I won't go through it, but I, I think there can be some more meat where the town would be more of an active participant as opposed to just involved in outreach, education, and uh, so forth. And, and along the same lines, since some of the district is unincorporated, certainly the, the county, mm -hmm. I would imagine, would need to be approached in a similar way. Thank you. Dave, you're up. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a comment on the CERT uh, mm. preparedness stuff. Uh, I've been very happy working with Victoria on coming up with prioritized lists and we've been working our way through the ARC upgrade, the uh, trailer upgrade, replacing expired items out of there. And uh, I'm actually very happy with what's going on there. We have a list if anyone actually would like to see it. And that's my comment. Uh, Chief Glass has a comment. Uh, just a point, as uh, Commissioner Bonin stated, I think in this specific section, engage and collaborate with community uh, volunteers and different agencies that um, county fire should be called out specifically somewhere in here um, as a collaboration partner for the district. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. Commissioner Tyson has a comment. Yeah, I just wanted to address the comment about uh, item B, collaboration with the town. And I just want want everybody, I'm sure most people already are, understand that, that Roger Spreen and I both serve on the commission here as well as on the city council. And I've had, I would say conversations at least twice weekly with Carl Cahill about the, the uh, town manager, uh, town city manager about how we can clarify uh, who does what. Um, we've had a, a resident write a very compelling email to us saying, uh, explaining how residents are confused. Who does, what does PG&E do? What does the town do? What does Los Altos Hills do? And I know we're, we're moving and, and I feel like we shouldn't be moving faster, but this really was only last, last week. 
I guess it was a little longer ago. Uh, that, anyways, we want it to move quickly. I, I don't think that we on our own can necessarily spell out all the things that the town is gonna do, but yeah. by placing it here, it serves as a, a reminder or a placeholder that we do intend to work closely. We already have a mechanism to do that with some of our joint uh, yeah. ownership here. And the specifics are gonna come and I would like them to come quickly and very specifically, um, but, but I don't know that we can fill that in here now today. I think it's good. All good. Okay. Can we I move on to number six? Yeah. Number six, we're moving on and then we'll wrap up. Um, this is the organizational item. Um, so making a statement that aligning the role of the commission and the staff to meet current and future demands, aligning with um, the findings that come out of the county processes um, and um, uh, developing a succession plan to maintain staffing, staffing capability. Um, we want to be thinking about how to support the programs that move forward. And we need to keep in mind, I think there was mentioned earlier that this is a robust plan for, for a two year period. And we do want to keep that in mind. Um, ensuring that we're staffing appropriately to be able to resource the programs to be successful. Um, let's see, was there anything else here? Um, thoughts, comments about the organizational item goal? Uh, this is Duffy speaking. We're going to be uh, undertaking this strategic plan in for a two year period. And we're going to be changing up and having new yeah, commissioners sure. come aboard. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a real uh, effort to try and accomplish this in a meaningful way. And I had a thought, as I looked at the way this laid out, that maybe we could, uh, because we're going to have something with a new commissioner coming aboard, potentially a new commissioner, we have our commissioner or new orientation program that we always <coughs> want to introduce them to. So we'll basically uh, have that in our, uh, you know, toolbox that we can use. However, since there are six, we should probably assign each one of these goals, maybe, you know, uh, how we could do it, like uh, pick up sticks or something, but to each commissioner and let each commissioner be assigned one of these goals and be then work closely with the rest of the commission. So that's not going to just fall on one person to implement the whole thing, but needs to be assigned. And that's kind of what we did with the last plan we actually assigned it to various people to do strategic pieces of the uh, overall plan. And that worked out pretty well. So uh, nothing's perfect, but I think that we should be thinking forward a little bit about how we can do this. So uh, I won't be around to help you implement this, but good luck. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh, we have a comment from Alan. Okay. Go ahead, Alan. Thank you. Uh, it isn't a comment specifically on six, but before you moved on, I wanted to mention that um, there's a there's a, a huge gaping hole within these goals, and what's missing is what the fire de fire department and fire district is responsible for doing every day, which is providing you know, fire protection and emergency services. And yeah. I don't see I don't see a goal that relates to that. And um, I would think that you would have to have the goal that, that pertains to that. Thank you. It is in the mission statement. Yeah, the mission statement. So what would a, what would a goal, um, what would that look like? Um, well, I could give you a lot of examples, but the chief, yeah. the chief knows them much better than I do because they're basically goals and objectives for the fire department with regards to resp response to response times, uh, um, uh, you know, overall service service levels. I mean, it's the type of things that are reported on on a, on a regular basis. And are there any goals and objectives to improve those things? I'd certainly like to see the mm -hmm. rural times come down in the northern part of the district. Maybe that means putting in another fire station. But if you don't have a goal and objective to do that, then then there's no motivation to 
to do that type of thing. So I'll, I'll give Chief Glass an opportunity to respond there. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Epstein, for the comments. And, and I do agree. And I think it is kind of covered under uh, some portions of one right now. I think it does say industry best practice, um, which we've, that goal has been limited uh, to the CWPP, uh, which again, that's wildfire strategy and, and pr protection. Uh, there are some comments, and I haven't read Appendix 4 thoroughly in a little bit, of, a little bit, but I know there are things in there on response, and that's been touched on by some of the other commissioners. Uh, I do agree. I think it's something that needs to be looked at. Um, it also could fall under Section 3, which is the use of technology to strategically target some of the projects within the fire district, and that could be leveraged to uh, take a look at response times to specific areas where we know that we have been deficient pre-COVID. Uh, COVID, we've been allowed to, to um, get a reprieve from some of the traffic, which allows us to make that Page Mill and 280 area that you're referring to that has been per, you know, predominantly challenging for us. Uh, and mm -hmm. I agree. The comments uh, that you made are valid and probably should be something that the district looks at improving overall service to the response uh, throughout the response area when you're looking at specific as an uh, operational response. Yeah, that's helpful to understand what the nexus is to the district and how the district can impact response times. So thank you for those explanations. We have a comment from Neil. Go ahead, Neil. Thank you again. Uh, there's a word that I haven't seen, and I would think maybe it would belong in the mission statement, and maybe it should be somewhere in here too. And that word is enforcement. Uh, I mentioned this because it was a specific complaint in the audit about the tree rem removal program that it was strictly voluntary. And the auditor thought that the district should have been using its power to declare something a hazard and, and do something about it. Um, I think we all want to focus on education and outreach and all that good stuff but maybe the district would be remiss if it didn't uh, at least discuss the role of enforcement. I'm not sure as a district that I see that in our coming two years to become an enforcement agency. Um, I know it's an issue, but how do we deal with you know, people, residents who have you know, neighbors who won't cut that, won't get rid of a whole lot of brush and so forth. There are some ways to the county that that can, that can be enforced. I don't see this organization becoming an enforcement vehicle, um, at least not in the next two years. So that's, that's why I don't see that as, uh, as detailed or as, that's why it's not really talked about here. I believe Chief Glass has a comment on that, Chief. Yeah, and for the county unincorporated areas, um, the central fire chief serves as the county fire marshal through contract with the county and is charged with enforcement of uh, county ordinance 833, which gives them the authority. And we do bring forth for those residents that are in violation of the hazard to the board for action to forward on to the has. Uh, I can't remember the specific group. I just remember the gentleman's name Mo at, at the county who then goes out, assesses the property, uh, cleans up the property, and then assesses the, the tax against, against the parcel. And uh, maybe uh, Council Coelho uh, could speak to that a little bit more if there needs to be further clarification. But uh, through the relationship that the fire district has with Central Fire currently through the contract, we, we have the ability to do some enforcement in partnership with the sheriff through the county's fire marshal office. Right. Uh, that's helpful. Yeah, that's the brush chipping and all that through Mo and the agricultural department from the county handles all of that. So we do have an, uh, some avenue to use there. That's correct. One of the things I wanted to just mention is that we, at one point in time, we were very concerned that the community didn't recognize what the role of the Los Altos Hills County Fire Department was, uh, the district was. And I think after what we've just gone through with the Board of Supervisors, and the 136 people lining up to talk 
for one minute. I mean, it was incredible that now I think there's a really good understanding of what we're all about. And uh, we have to really seize that opportunity. And <clears throat> one of the things is that we have a brochure that's called the services for Los Altos Hills and the adjoining unincorporated area. And I think we need to go back and look at that. Uh, I say that to Jay, because in it, we have outlined what our core services are and we can restate that again in a very positive sense after what we've just been through so that they will understand whether it's just the emergency response services priority, uh, water mains and hydrant operations that Alan thinks we should get out of and uh, fuel management, disaster preparedness are our four main things that we're all about. So I think that we need to look at what we're handing out to the public right now uh, to again, outline what our core mission is and what we're all about. So that would be one of the suggestions that I would uh, make sure that we included in our strategic plan going forward to revise some of the uh, public uh, 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 materials that we have. Thanks. Okay. I think in item five, E or F, um, could certainly cover some of those things. And that, that would be a, a specific action that the commission might look for in the coming um, months. So, okay, uh, we've taken a chunk of time. Um, really appreciate the comments. And again, um, this is an iterative process. We're refining still. So let me take another um, run through with this document and make some improvements based on all the input tonight. Um, my suggestion would be that I develop for you a draft successor strategic plan document that frames it, explains things, talks about all the different elements we spoke of in September, the successes, the challenges, um, and the revision to the goals and objectives, and tee that up for the commission for the November regular meeting. Um, in which you could um, review that. I'll, I'll um, work with the staff so that we could send it out to you well in advance of the meeting so you have a chance to review it. Um, and then um, the commission could make edits and changes at that time at the meeting. Um, uh, and we can look at the best opportunity for adoption, um, whether it would be November or, or the January 19th meeting. Um, we did have a, a date on hold for a week from tonight, Tuesday the 27th. Um, if the commission would find value in having some more discussion, that, that could be a special meeting. Um, so I would put that to the commission if they'd like to have some further discussion on either these goals and objectives or the, the plan itself, or if it would be more helpful to actually have the document for you to review and then provide feedback. Any strong feelings from the commission on how to proceed? I would say I'd prefer to have the document and give feedback, but I did hear a comment earlier that I liked and that is maybe uh, we could just uh, agree to have Jay Logan assign us each a um, one to be sort of the focal point, the lead point on, on each of those six Maybe we'll give Mark Warren a buy. Okay, Mark, you, you owe me. And then uh, if we just agree to something like that, then at least we, we make sure that, that somebody's taking a specific responsibility for each of these, knowing what we think the whole thing should look like. I support that, George. I think that's a good that? idea. George, do you we'll want that back before you. the November 17th meeting or after? Before. Before, before. yeah. Okay, so let's get some volunteers then, if that's if that's the, the will of the commission. Is that? Didn't didn't uh, George say that Jay should assign us? Yes, I, I, I said that Jay shall anoint us each with what she thinks is maybe our best best match with our skill set if we have one. Yeah. Okay. Good, George. You know, what, the, what we've done for the past four years is we had a subcommittee um, that was sort of tasked with addressing all of the goals. Uh, myself, Duffy, led by Duffy, uh, myself and Janice assisting. Um, 
I'm trying to think uh, whether um, I certainly know what things I would want to tackle, but I don't know if it makes sense to assign them out in a fan out now or to wait and see which uh, which efforts will require sort of a, 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 a leading point person for each one. It may not be the top of a specific goal. It may be a particular effort uh, underneath one of the goals. So um, it's fine to assign people at this point. I'm not sure operationally it will fall that neatly in line um, until we really just figure out what our major projects are, the ones that really need someone running them every, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, just to have a global, you know, like what any of those six that attracted you the most that you would be, you know, could work with and enjoy participating in well, of the six. This, how, let me offer this. How about taking from what Commissioner Price just said, how about if any of these spoke to you, you'd like to have more time to explore it, send me an email, let me know which goal and which objective or which objective you think should be added. And then I'll send those off to Marcy. And between Marcy, Sarah, and I, we can kind of um, accumulate them together. So rather than having the picture get bigger, we just want to keep pulling it together so we meet our sure. target for either November the 17th or yeah. in January to pull right. this into completion. Would that be That's good. That's Makes good. Sense. George, you're the maker of the motion. OK, I got a thumbs up. OK, so the request from Jay Logan to the commissioners and staff also, please send me ideas that you think can, can go into this plan also from the public and we'll incorporate those. Maybe there'll be summaries, maybe there'll be new ideas. Marcy, does that sound okay to you? Great, great. Okay. Yeah. And then um, we have all the input from the discussion tonight, which, is, which has been terrific. Thank you all the members of the public and the commission um, Chief Glass, um, and certainly um, other staff, if they have thoughts and ideas, we'd love to hear that too. So we will compile and refine and um, bring it before you as a document and um, look forward to further edits at that time. Great. Thanks, Marcy. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all so much. Good. Thank you, Marcy. Take care. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you. Uh, that concludes um, item 15. So we'll go back to the regular flow of the agenda. Next item is item eight, receive the general manager report. Yes, thank you. Item 8A, events and activities, 8B, okay, rescue sign for resident. General Manager Logan. Yes, thank you, um, President Warren. Let me start with the uh, title page, which says, okay. I thought that was a good way of saying that we're okay. Um, and then moving to the next uh, next slide, Sarah, please. What I did was an end of, this is events, but end of the year activities and forward looking to 2021. So just to summarize how I see the end of the year coming, notice please that we have a new agenda format. And thank you to Rob Quello for helping pull that together, the idea. What we're doing here is if you've gotten used to the Board of Supervisors agendas, now we're in harmony with Board of Supervisors. And this is really a nice way of outlining the topic and then having the items uh, beneath them either to approve, receive, adopt, accept, um, consider. And that's how the agenda is now flowing. And I think it is very, uh, makes a lot of sense and is easily managed. So we, we have a new agenda. Uh, the next item is we're going to be reviewing our service agreements. A number of them expire November, uh, no, expire the end of the year. And so we'll bring those new agreements to you November 17th. Third is we want to review staffing, vacant positions and, and employment agreements of the staff. That'll be coming November 17th. Vacancies on the commission, certainly a notice to the public uh, application process will is starting now. Completion of the successor strategic plan. Um, Corey and I've got to get working on the budget to get information out to the standing committee that'll work with the budget. We've got to do that very quickly. And then uh, we anticipate no December commission meeting as is traditional. We'll see if we can do that. 
and then uh, we'll be scheduling the 2021 commission meetings. So all of that has to be completed by the end of the year, along with a lot of the other tasks that we have in front of us uh, having to do with the audit. Forward looking into 2021, um, all activities, programs, and initiatives performed within the recommendations of the county management audit. Uh, that's procurement policies and procedures, advice and review by county council, monthly reports and review to FGOC and Hewlett, those are the county committees. Report on any plan to transfer district property has to be made to the county, whether it's a confidential plan or a uh, public plan. Attention to record storage. And I wanted to mention that right now nine boxes were transferred and these are nine boxes of legal documents transferred to county council from uh, Dan Siegel's office. And then we have to align uh, with align our efforts with Los Altos Hills Town, Santa Clara County Fire Department, and in wildfire protection planning. I look forward to that in 21, starting now, and regional perspectives for fire protection and prevention. So those were kind of my top of the mark, how to end the year and how to look forward to starting the year. And that concludes my report, Mr. President, unless there are questions. Oh, forgot the okay. You got the okay sign. Thank you, thank you, Sarah. Uh, okay, sign. So this is still a work in progress. We're uh, still trying to work through the procurement process for the cards. I hope they go out soon. And that concludes my report. Great, thank you, Jay. Sure. Are there any discussions from the commissioners? Any public comment on this item? Hearing none, we'll now move to item nine, approval of notice of termination of the agreement with Libra Cassidy Whitmore for legal services pertaining to employment relations matter. General Manager Logan, please present the report. Yes, this is an administrative detail very quickly. County Council is now the exclusive representative for district legal services. There is an agreement for legal services with Libra Cassidy Whitmore, and that was made for personnel and district organizational purposes uh, when questions arose. The district will no longer be using outside private counsel. And so the recommendation is that um, we terminate the agreement with Libra Cassidy Whitmore. I had a conference, was held with uh, Rich Rick Bolanos, who's the lead attorney who was working with the district to address the item of termination and also to request records related to district work be sent to county council. And so with the approval of the commission, I will provide written notice to Libra Cassidy Whitmore, attorney of the termination of the agreement with the district. That's my report. Great, thank you, Jay. Sure. Um, are there any clarifying questions from the commission? Hearing none. All right, I'll now hear a motion. So we for a motion to terminate, uh, move forward with the termination of the agreement. So moved. That's Tyson. I need a second, please. Duffy's second. Duffy. Okay. Uh, the Got item it. is now open for discussion. Is there any discussion from the commissioners? Is there any public comment on this item? There's no further discussion. We'll now vote. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct a roll call vote. President Warren? Yes. Vice President Vaughn? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Spreen? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Janice? Janice? On mute. Mm -hmm. She. Janice? Commissioner Carr? Mm -hmm. Yes, we will pass Commissioner Carr. Um, I and think she got it. it finally. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Okay, thank you. And uh, Commissioner Cooney? Yes. All right, great. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you. All right, we'll now move to item 10 emergency services manager report. Item 10A events and activities, 10B community emergency response team cert activities, and 10C progress on um, operational data collection, integration, and mapping emergency services. Manager Captain Gluhan, please present the report. Denise, Captain Gluhan. 
unmute. Hold on. Can you hear me okay now? Now we can hear you. Okay. The unmute button was not working for me either. Sorry. Thank you, President Warren and commissioners and, and public and staff. Um, try to make this really quick. Uh, mm -hmm. yep. A little bit late. Uh, this is, uh, go ahead and turn to the next page. Please, Sarah. So here's some activities, uh, pretty much straightforward. They, they change a little bit month to month. I will say the biggest uptick was in public um, interest in both fire safety issues, uh, complaints about neighbors and their fire safety issues, and then generally about the um, Board of Supervisor meeting. So I've had a lot of outreach uh, for those items, um, you know, off from, from formal meetings and, and those types of requests. So I'm not gonna, uh, I'll just go really quick. Uh, we do CCLT CERT meetings. Uh, Victoria is assisting with that. Uh, Fire Safe Council meeting, we had that today. Uh, it's always good information for us. We still are doing the joint uh, bi-weekly PIO now meetings, um, giving us an update and then obviously our board of supervisor meeting. Uh, I've done an earthquake coalition because we have to remember we don't just have wildfires as, as issues that we need to prepare for. Um, I've been meeting uh, quite a bit with um, Eddie Sanchez. He's been our designate for doing projects in Los Altos Hills, along with Jackson. Uh, and I'll talk about the parcel project. So I've been meeting with them for that uh, to clean up our parcel. A uh, lot of interest in the neighborhood evacuation. In fact, I have a meeting tomorrow with Madero Creek and I have an ongoing uh, pending uh, Moody Road, Sherlock area uh, evacuation planning as well as a couple of others. Um, we're still reviewing some of the evacuation drills, some of the gapping that we've noticed, uh, trying to work up on some of that and some of the messaging around improving uh, in messaging and evacuation planning. And then also the Firewise uh, community certification. We have been a little bit on hold uh, because of the management uh, or the Board of Supervisors meeting and the, and the audit issues. Um, some upcoming recordings we'll be doing. Uh, we would like to get that uh, a formal evacuation workshop video that can be open for public use uh, to look at, even if they're not doing a workshop. And then we're working on training vi videos um, for that preparedness workshop specifically, property hygiene, and some of the other uh, chipping included in the property hygiene will be a chipping instructional video, mostly covering frequently asked questions and program standards so that people can get on and look at that if they have questions about the chipping program. Sarah? So specifically one of the projects that we have, and we're going to start this hopefully uh, next week or the beginning of November, is the uh, parcel lot. Initially when I saw this uh, back in the late spring, um, I, you know, I said, what, what's our normal maintenance schedule? Noticed how overgrown and um, uh, kind of in disrepair it was as far as a property hygiene sense and thought that it would be a great training video opportunity. So you see a map and what we did is took the parcel, divided it into basically 14 projects. The plan is a two day work crew. So it is a little more, uh, because it's an instructional video, it's not a constant work method. It's an oversight of these projects around being videotaped at the same time. Two pictures here, we have a dead tree. Uh, we're gonna cut uh, the items in eight through 13 on the first day and specifically do the chipping um, recording around that because we'll, we'll cut the brush down and we'll stack it on the side of the road and, and demonstrate uh, proper stacking, placement, things like that. And then in item uh, day two, items uh, one through seven and 14, 14 is generally just mowing of the property or it's actually be a weed eater. Everything else, there's some tree removals of dead trees and really working on our ladder fuels and our spatial, the vertical fuel modeling, uh, the space between different um, fuel models. And then again, the, the laddering or the um, vertical, I'm sorry, the horizontal spacing between and the vertical, the up and down the laddering, removing the grasses and the brushes that go up into the trees that spread the fire. So that's that, next page. And then we've talked about, um, this is on tap. I'm not sure of the exact timeline yet. Uh, we would like to complete it obviously in this fall coming up, but this is phase two of the shaded fuel break. This is the other end and I have, it's a little hard to see, but the start and finish is up there in the right-hand corner. And you can see that also down here. It was extended from the bottom photo. It was extended uh, a couple of streets down. Originally we were gonna stop a little sooner. We decided to take it a little further down to just complete all of Page Mill Road. And again, the importance of this, we've already talked about the alignment with other jurisdictions, open spaces, 
but mostly as a hardened evacuation route, um, which we wanna go ahead and continue throughout the district. And we've already talked alongside the edges of our shared areas with some of the open space partners and collaborators that we have in the county. Next slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over to Victoria. If she'd like to queue herself up, she can give you an update on what's going on in the land of CERT. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, just to give you a quick update, um, we have been um, meeting quite regularly now that the weather is cooperating to get um, our bins have been now fully inventoried and relabeled and weight tested. Um, we have um, identified that some of our maps for the area, should there be an activation, are outdated. Um, and I'd like to thank Commissioner Kearney for helping us uh, update those maps. Um, we've also made a decision to reorganize our bin systems at the ARC, kind of to better reflect when you get to the ARC, kind of where you're going to start, um, color coding those, and those goes, goes with uh, rules assignments. Um, I did order some um, nice big medical bags that I do a video on, uh, training on, um, that will be a good addition to the ARC uh, for um, attending to uh, large numbers of people who require some medical care. Um, CERT trailers, our trailer Loyola's had some issues that have been resolved now. Um, tires are pumped and ready to go, and we have a new battery in there for the generator. I'd really like to thank um, the crews at uh, the Loyola station for their help. Um, they've been really awesome in checking it and um, letting me know when there's things going on, and I really want to um, just appreciate them with that. Um, the best updates, we have 57 people that have had their best uh, handed out to them. Um, we have the extras now inventoried and left at the ARC. Dave still has a few that he's trying to uh, catch up with. Um, we also are starting to distribute our large name tag magnetic holders um, that he has created and um, made for our certs as well. Do I have another slide? Aha, okay. Um, trainings and activities. We still remaining having two trainings and two meetings a month. Um, we're being very aggressive in doing a um, very nice recon series. It was going to start as a three-part series. It's now, I think, on six parts. Um, it's kind of taken on a level of its own, and we've had a lot of people that have volunteered, and we've kind of had about 17 people that are established with uh, bi-monthly trainings on recon. Um, we're hoping to plan a tabletop drill uh, coming up next month to kind of go over what we've learned um, and do some radio language um, and, and train some people up some, um, some ham things as well. Um, we had to postpone the training videos that we planned as we wanted to kind of organize the ARC a little better for activation. Um, but we were going to, as soon as we get that figured out, um, do some triage videos um, and then first steps when arriving at the ARC, since we can't do a lot of activation with everybody going there, we're gonna do some, some video footage to show them kind of what that would look like. Uh, we're also doing our backpack refresh Denise has been very helpful in getting some items purchased for us for that. Um, the focus is going to be on the active members for right now on some a refresh. And with that, um, we're going to try to loop some recruitment in there. Um, I think that um, that could be our focus now that we've kind of have ourselves uh, caught up on some of our refresh items. I think recruitment is where we're going to be forward looking at. And um, we're also working on doing some collaboration and training with Los Altos. Um, we're going to do a five part series uh, along with um, the emergency manager of Los Altos CERT. Uh, to kind of get some refreshing going on with our CERT programs. Um, it's been uh, sort of lost during the COVID stuff. So um, that is sort of where we're at with CERT. Great, thank you, Victoria. So I'll finish up with Sarah Hendricks giving a, uh, an update on our operational data collection integration and mapping, Sarah. Thank you, Captain Glidhan. Um, briefly, the project working group, which includes staff and Commissioner Spreen, has met with Patrick Kelleher of Lynx Technologies multiple times to discuss this project um, and refine the scope to meet the needs of the district. Uh, the goal of the project is to establish a single source of data for the district and to consolidate the information we receive from our partner agencies. Per the working group's directions, Patrick has revised the scope, which is available for your review as the material for agenda item 11 coming up. Uh, you'll see the scope has been narrowed from the previous version for operational efficiency. This is what we envision as the first phase of the data integration project and allows us to build a central repository of our existing data, starting with a base map that integrates the highly accurate Town of Los Altos Hills data, edge mapped with county data for the unincorporated areas, which would provide us with a single seamless base map. 
Links will create layers for fire hydrant information in our current vegetation management data. And an internal website will be developed for staff use um, for the creation of maps, data queries, and additional, additionally training on the operations and functionality of the site. Um, as indicated in the scope, links will provide ongoing database maintenance, management, and administration. They'll work with us to develop a communications plan and process between the district and our partner agencies to ensure that data updates are shared in a timely manner. Uh, the system will be used by staff to geographically track program delivery and metrics. For example, we can see where brush chipping has occurred in the district, but the more telling data is going to be where that brush chipping has not occurred. Um, combining that information with other data, such as the vegetation overlay, will enable the district to identify high risk areas that could benefit from the brush chipping program. And that's just an example of one of the programs that um, we could leverage this data with. Identifying those areas will, provide, will allow us to develop a more targeted approach to delivery and implementation of programs rather than relying on residents to request service. The full scope is available in the links proposal. Uh, that's the end of my update and I'm happy to answer any questions. And also the end of my update, it just, this will be one of the items, uh, we have a valve uh, leak that has appeared in the last couple of a week or so. And um, Jeff will be talking to that in, in a few moments. Any questions for myself or Victoria or Sarah? Thank you, and a report. Great, thank you. All right, any, um, any discussion from the commissioners? Any questions, comments from the public? Uh, Dave, Dave Stewart has a question. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see anything in the uh, Lynx Technologies proposal that discusses some of the requirements that CERT has had. It's been- So Dave, hold that for a second. We're gonna go to the Lynx proposal in a second and go through it. Okay. That's item actual 11. Ah, all right, sorry, jumped ahead. Yeah, okay. yeah, hold that. We'll get right back to you. All right, any other public comment? All right, we will now move to item 11, approval and authorization uh, and authorized execution of agreement with Lynx technology related to operation data collection, integration and mapping in an amount of not to exceed $12,800 and $75 per hour for additional work beyond scope for a period of two years from November 1st, 2020 through October 31st, 2022 that has been reviewed and approved by county council as to form and legality. All right, special projects consultant Hendricks, uh, please introduce the item beyond what you've already provided. Thank you, President Warren. Yes, yeah, so um, I touched on the proposal in the previous item. Um, I'll just go ahead and um, kind of recap what we're asking. So staff is requesting the commission's approval and authorization to execute an agreement with Lynx Technologies for the services described in the proposal and meeting the terms as presented in the title of the agenda to be reviewed and approved by county council. Um, should you approve and authorize this action, staff will work with Lynx and county council to draft and execute the agreement and initiate the project. Um, to address Mr. Stewart's question, uh, what, um, we're kind of seeing this project as a first phase of our data integration project. So right now we have no <laughs> central repository for all of our data. And that's really the first step in getting this project off the ground is getting um, links to kind of consolidate all of the information that we have um, in various places with in from various agencies, particularly the town of Los Altos Hills, County Fire and the county itself. Um, in addition to Santa Clara County Fire Safe Council um, and any of our other partner agencies. We really just want to get a website created and get the data that we currently have into that website and figure out how staff can actually use it uh, to leverage um, our program delivery methods and to evaluate those programs. Um, and then the CERT um, program and some of the other programs that we had previously discussed in other uh, scopes and presentations provided by other vendors would be considered in a phase two of the project. Uh, we know that CERT has a ton of data right now that you guys are very skilled at manipulating and sharing um, and, and using. So <laughs> from what I've heard, <laughs> that's the word on the street anyway, Dave, I see you waffling your hand there. Um, so we, we kind of want to take this opportunity to just really focus on what the district needs immediately at hand. And then down the road in a phase two of this project, we would look at integrating CERT data as well as some of our other programs. 
Okay, then my uh, citizen comment is, that's good, don't forget us. <laughs> of course not, we never could. <laughs> and I'm happy to answer any other questions uh, from the commission or the public. Any questions from the commission? All right, so I'm looking for a motion here to for approve item 11. Spring will move to approve second, an authorized please. execution of agreement. Not number yes, 11. Second. Do I need to read the whole thing? No, no, we got that. We need a second, please. I'm on second. Now we move for the second. All right, item is now open for discussion. Is there any discussion from the commission? Is there any public comment on the item? All right, hearing none, we'll now move, we'll now vote. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct a roll call vote. President Warren? Yes. Vice President Vaughn? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Spreen? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kearney? Yes. And the motion passes 7 0. Very good. We'll now move to item 12. Receive the fire hydrant report. Item 12A, approve and authorize funds for emergency hydrant lateral repair and authorize general manager to execute construction agreement with contractors and repair agreement for um, uh, board ratification at the November 17, 2020 commission meeting. General Manager Logan, please present the item. This is 12A. Thank you, Mr. Jay, you're mute. mute. So sorry. I'd, I'd like, uh, thank you, President Warren. I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Friar and Loretta consultant engineer, Jeff Tarantino. And gratefully we have Jeff on board because it never seems to be a dull day without him. Uh, he will provide an overview of the lateral leakage that just uh, occurred and uh, the inspection that occurred from his firm and then the efforts to repair it. So uh, Mr. Tarantino, and thank you for hanging in with us in a long evening tonight. Could you oh. give an overview of this lateral leakage? Sure, no problem, General Manager, happy to do so. Uh, President Warren, commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to work with the commission. So um, I believe, uh, Sarah, we have some, some uh, documents to share. So the first item, 12A, is a, uh, a leaking valve uh, that uh, has, was observed in the field. And so what we're looking at here in the first page uh, is our incident report. Um, and what you can see uh, from, from the photo is uh, when we arrived on site, uh, we noticed uh, water um, basically expressing itself at the surface at the valve. The valve there is in the, in the middle of the concrete and just off the, just off the screen there to the left is the, is the hydrant. So we received a call from Captain uh, Gluhan uh, notifying us of the issue. Uh, my staff met uh, in the field with uh, Prisma Hills Water District and based on our observations um, of, the, of the conditions, we believe that the, the leak is, is a result of uh, you know, the, the valve not seating properly or some issue with the fire hydrant lateral. So if, uh, Sarah, would you mind scrolling to the next page? And you might have to zoom out here. So my staff developed a uh, improvement plan, um, which will involve um, removing and uh, uh, storing the existing fire hydrant. We'll go ahead and reuse it. And we are proposing to completely remove the lateral and replace it with new uh, facilities, including we'll have to cut out the existing T on the water main there on the opposite side of the Scano, uh, put in a new T connected to the existing water main uh, and add a new valve. This valve will be installed. Currently the valve is actually right adjacent to the fire hydrant. But as shown in the standard detail, um, also in the, also on the on the drawing there, I apologize for that. It's probably a little small to see. But the valve is to be installed actually at the T, so that the entire lateral could be isolated. So we'll install the valve at the T. Um, once that valve, once the T and valve are installed, we'll be able to um, uh, turn water service back on because in order to complete this work, 
in cooperation with Persimmon Hills Water District, will actually need to do a shutdown. Um, at this point, my understanding from talking with uh, Persimmon Hills is this will affect approximately 20 residences. And so we'll plan out that shutdown with Persimmon Hills, including the notification before performing the work. Um, once the T and valve are installed, we'll be able to restore the water main service and then complete the lateral installation and reinstallation of the fire hydrant. So uh, we were we visited the site, uh, I believe it was uh, Thursday last week. Um, once we were able to assess the conditions and develop this drawing that you have in front of you, um, we solicited uh, construction quotes from four contractors. Um, we requested that quotes be delivered today by 5 p.m. Uh, we received two quotes, uh, one from Daco Construction and a second quote from C2R Engineering. Um, Daco Construction's quote was $43,982.51. And C2R uh, is a quote was slightly lower at $36,780. Uh, C2R is a, a, a local uh, pipeline contractor. Um, they're based in Mountain View. Um, they actually are currently actively working on a, on a small subdivision project in Los Altos Hills. Um, and they are experienced with this type of work. Um, uh, my firm, Friar and Loretta, has worked with uh, C2R on uh, three projects uh, within the last uh, three years and including we just recently completed a project in Pacifica that included actually uh, waterline work similar, similar to this work. Um, so at this point, um, we're proposing to proceed with the repair. It's uh, something that does need to be addressed. Uh, it is actively leaking uh, and, and move forward with uh, C2R to perform the work. So uh, General Manager Logan, do you have anything else to add? I don't believe so. Uh, just if any, I, I think there's one, uh, one more detail underneath the, the slide you have. Sarah, can you scroll down one more? There's one of them. No? No, I think that the other photos were on uh, uh, Captain Gluhan's uh, presentation where she showed a, a couple of different shots of the same okay. water leak. Okay. I I'm on the website, so I think in the materials there is one more photo that just shows the um, where the gate valve is not properly located, which is mm -hmm. right next to the hydrant. Whereas, as you pointed out, it should be over by the main and attach uh, from the T to the main. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. But thank you. Great. So I'm happy to answer any questions the commissioners may have. All right. Any questions from commissioners? Commissioner Kearney has a question. Thanks, uh, Sarah. Great presentation. Thank you. How long will the main be shut down? Um, we would anticipate probably an eight hour shutdown maximum. So it'll be planned, all parts purchased and ready to be installed. And so because we're gonna be installing the, the valve with the T um, that should take one day of operation. All right. Are there any further questions from the commissioners? Hearing none, all right. Um, Rob, Mr. Coelho, I'd like to confirm that any agreement would be approved by the Office of the County Council as to form and legality. Is that correct? That's right. And that's what the action item is as agenda is that any agreement uh, between the uh, vendor uh, would be uh, reviewed by us and we would sign off approving as to form and legality. Uh, and it would uh, return to the board for uh, uh, at the next meeting as well. Great. Thank you, Rob. All right, so I'll now entertain a motion for 12A, please. I yeah. think Alan has a question. Oh, is there a question from the public? I'm sorry. Oh, we usually no. wait until after the motion has been made to entertain questions from the public. So I was holding off. Right, let's on get that. a motion on the floor and we'll get to you, Alan. Okay, well, Tyson can make the make the motion for um, to approve and authorize the funds for this uh, hydrant work. Great, thank you, George. I need a second, please. Duffy seconds. Thank you, Duffy. All right. Um, so the item is now open for discussion. Is there any further discussion from the commissioners? Hearing none, let's go to the public. Any questions, comments, concerns from the public? Alan? Thank you. I just had two questions. Um, I suspect most of the cost associated with doing this repair is, is the um, decision to um, move the valve over to the other uh, How much risk would be associated with just replacing the valve in its current location and how much savings would there be? 
And secondarily, based upon the discussion I've heard, it sounds like this week is going to go on for a month and a half while you guys get the appropriate approval to uh, proceed ahead. If I misunderstood that, I, I apologize. So I, I'm happy to answer the question about the valve. Um, so the, the valve, um, because we can't see uh, under the ground, what we do anticipate to find is that valve is either offset or damaged, um, meaning that the lateral is likely damaged as well. So in order to properly uh, install the valve, it's important to, to attach it to the T at the main. And based on our experience and, and the age of this system, um, we, don't, we don't believe it to be feasible uh, to try and cut in a new valve at, at the main uh, in order to protect the lateral. So the, 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 the most appropriate path forward to, to restore service is to, is to remove and replace the entire lateral. And as to the process question, it's Rob Coelho, uh, Assistant County Council. Uh, the motion pending is uh, to uh, have the board authorize the work to be done on an emergency basis, uh, to have uh, us work with the uh, staff uh, to get an agreement in place, and then to return to the board on November 17th for ratification of that agreement. The goal is uh, to get the leak taken care of so that we don't have to wait until the next meeting. That's the whole purpose of setting it up the way we have, uh, but also for a public transparency to come back to the board and the, uh, so the commissioners can actually see uh, the agreement, confirm that it was approved as the form and legality, and then ratify it uh, after the fact because there's no document sitting in front of you today uh, because of the uh, short around, uh, amount of turnaround time that often comes with discovery of leaks and then uh, trying to get things uh, bid. Yeah, and we're trying not to wait six weeks to do this. Can that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Any further public questions, comments? All right. Hearing none, let's move to a vote. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct a roll call vote. President Warren? Yes. Vice President Bond? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Spreen? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kearney? Yes. Okay, motion passes seven to zero. Thank you very much. We'll now move to 12B, approve Horseshoe Lane Erosion Report Repair Project and, um, and request for proposals for bid and direct general manager to return with recommendations for award of bid. General Manager Logan, please present the item. Thank you, President Warren. Um, as you recall, the erosion repair for Horseshoe Lane was discussed at the September 15th meeting, and Mr. Tarantino was to return um, to the October 20th meeting with the RFQ request for uh, uh, quotes and approval of the bid. Mr. Tar Tarantino, can you provide an overview and update of the bidding process or of the uh, RFP process, RFQ process? Yes, happy to, uh, General Manager Logan. Um, so, uh, Sarah, would you mind bringing up the uh, attachment? Um, and while while Sarah's doing that, um, so so as General Manager Logan indicated, we we had come to the commission in uh, September to review kind of a concept of the improvement plan, and so we now have put together a request for quote package um, that includes uh, you know a, a simple description of the scope. And then there is a, which is, which you can see on your screen here. And so what the contractors will be asked to do is to provide a quote for um, initial uh, clearing grubbing. So removing of, uh, of the vegetation that's now kind of grown on the, on the area where we, where the erosion occurred, um, strip the topsoil stockpile and save it. We're going to reuse most of that material, um, excavate and, and prepare the subgrade uh, and then backfill uh, the, the slope uh, with um, a combination of, of, of aggregate base. And then we're gonna re replace the topsoil, place it back on top of the aggregate base, uh, grading it to a two to one slope in conformance with the town grading permit requirements. And then the final step will be to apply erosion control measures. So we'll be doing um, a process called hydro seeding, which, um, which will allow us to, to spread uh, a, a mixture of seed and uh, fertilizer. 
Uh, and then that, that, uh, that hydro seed will then be covered with a uh, coconut jute netting, which is a, basically a biodegradable erosion control measure. So that'll protect the seed while it germinates and the grasses establish themselves to provide uh, the permanent erosion control. And then that jute net will basically biodegrade over, over time just from UV exposure. Um, so Sarah, would you mind scrolling to the next page? And so here, uh, in, shown on the screen, is our proposed um, improvement plan. So the, the image on the far left-hand side is our plan view showing uh, the grading, so restoring to a two-to-one slope. Uh, this is kind of a, just a little bit uh, more um, refined version of the, of the grading plan that we reviewed uh, at the last meeting. The section view in the middle there uh, identifies the amount of excavation that will occur including we're going to have the contractor establish several benches, including a keyway at the bottom of the, of the slope. And then the final image on the right is uh, showing the limits of the, um, of the class two ag base, is, which is just kind of a, a, an appropriate material, uh, common material used to, to re reestablish slopes and can be compacted in place uh, to provide a sturdy subgrade so that we could then place, uh, you know, reuse the topsoil that will have stripped off off the site and and replace it and and allow the um, uh, hydro seeding process. So just thing, one thing I want to note is that our our vertical um, profiles there, the the middle image and the right image, those are exaggerated scales. So it's a basically a five times exaggeration. It's not actually that steep in in the uh, in 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 real real world out there, but we use an exaggerated scale to be able to to show the work to be done. Um, so, and all work will be completed in accordance with a grading permit, which we will obtain from the town before uh, proceeding with the work. Um, and uh, and uh, that is all I have at this point. So I'm happy to answer any questions the commissioners may have about the work. Great, all right, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, General Manager Logan. All right, are there any clarifying questions from the commissioners? All right, I'll now entertain a motion for 12B. Green moves the motion. Roger, any a second, please? One second. All right, Melvin seconded. All right, the item is now open for discussion. Is there any other discussion from the commission for 12B? Is there any public comment on this item? If there's no further discussion. We'll now vote. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct the roll call vote. Okay, President Warren? Yes. Vice President Bond? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Spreen? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kearney? Okay. That's fine. Yes. Thank you. Uh, motion passes 7 0. Great. We'll now move to item 12C Hydrant uh, Project Updates. General Manager Logan, please provide the update. Uh, yes, thank you. And I will turn it over to uh, Jeff Tarantino. Jeff? Great, thank you, General Manager Logan. Uh, so wanted to provide updates uh, on an existing project uh, Persimmon Hills Water District is completing. Um, it's their TAFE Elena um, water main replacement project. Um, as part of that work, they um, are nearly complete installing, uh, I believe it's nine new hydrants. Um, once uh, the work has been completed, uh, FNL will do a site visit to confirm uh, hydrant installation. Um, there are uh, a majority of those hydrants are actually active now. So they have been, uh, the work has been completed for, for large portions of the work and are active and providing additional protection for the district and its, and its customers. Um, but once all the work is completed, we'll, we'll go ahead and field verify everything's uh, complete. And um, ultimately, um, as I understand it, uh, that the uh, Persima Hills will be providing an invoice for the work for the district's portions of, of the services. So that is the update on the TAFE Elena project. Uh, Jay, is that any, anything else you want to highlight on that, that project? Um, I don't, I don't believe so. Uh, you did, did you mention that eight of the hydrants were relocated? Yes. So, uh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so eight of the, um, at the time of the design, um, it, uh, I believe it was uh, Captain Gilhan, Gluhan uh, met with uh, Persima Hills and, and they picked the uh, more appropriate locations for, for eight of the hydrants uh, in order to provide better coverage um, for, for the customers. Yes. Thank you. And then uh, the second project is um, the, the Persimmon Hills Water District is in the process of designing a, a second main replacement project along Concepcion Road. Um, 
Included within those limits are, um, there's three courts um, for, for, the, um, for the project. I apologize, I'm just pulling up my report here. Those are uh, the roads, are uh, Alto Verde Lane, Roble Veneno Lane, excuse me if I'm mispronouncing that, and Corte Madera Lane. So the, the work on Concepcion involves removal and replacement of the existing water main. Um, the existing mains on those three courts are e existing four inch water mains. Uh, at this time, Prisma Hills is not intending to replace those four inch mains. The mains are actually um, able to deliver uh, and meet domestic and irrigation demands uh, for the customers along those mains. Um, but uh, Prisma Hills reached out to the fire district to inquire whether the district would be interested in considering potentially upgrading the mains to improve um, fire flow uh, uh, availability in those mains. Currently, um, the water, the four inch water mains um, uh, don't provide adequate fire flow. Um, they are currently, according to data provided by Prisma Hills Water District, um, each of those mains provides about a little bit less than 600 gallons per minute. Um, at 50 PSI. Um, in order to improve fire flow capabilities, um, those three mains would each need to be upgraded to an eight inch main. Uh, and, and based on the water modeling um, performed by Person Hills uh, engineer, um, and my staff has reviewed and, and um, takes no exception to the modeling data, um, that eight inch main would provide uh, a, a significant increase in fire flow availability. So again, Currently, the mains provide approximately 580 gallons per minute. With an upgrade to an eight-inch main, um, the estimated increase in uh, flow availability is, is nearly 2,400 GPM, so a, a very significant increase in um, um, fire flow availability. Um, in addition, um, it, you know, our staff looked at um, fire hydrant layout, and we would um, suggest if the commission um, would like to proceed with the project, um, that it, you, we would add an additional two fire hydrants to the existing three hydrants that are that are uh, in place today. So, so we wanted to bring this project to the commission for for discussion. Um, and General Manager Logan, is there anything else um, that I haven't highlighted yet? Uh, no, I think that's fine. I think it's just an FYI for FYI, the. Excuse me. Um, not particularly a discussion they can entertain at this point in time. Uh, we're just bringing it to you because Persima Hills is in the, the construction design phase and would need to know probably by the end of the year if the district is interested in participating. Now, the, the cost for participation would be over a million dollars and uh, the water main would not be the property of the fire district. And so this falls squarely within the question that's being researched right now by county council, which would be, is this an appropriate or even a legal use of district funds? But because the, the question is starting to emerge, we thought it best just to advise the, uh, the commission of this project that's going on. So is that, is that a fair summary, Jeff, of, of what's occurring? Yes, it is. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, You're Jay. Welcome. All right. Is there any discussion from the commissioners regarding self seating fire hydrant projects? Uh, Commissioner Kearney has a comment. Yeah, is there a plan to um, to confer with County Fire about this? Um, we haven't discussed it at this time. That would be something that that could be done. I mean, in terms of new hydrants, it just seems to me that that's something that the you know fire department ought to look at. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I uh, this is uh, Commissioner Vaughn. I uh, believe that this is definitely something that we should look at. And this is something that um, I really have been pushing since I've been on this commission. And if there's a way that uh, council can um, put this in a way where something like this gets approved. Um, we have professional engineers which is probably out of the scope of the fire department in the sense of uh, adding additional hydrants and things like that. Um, and so I, I would agree with the consultants when it comes to things like that. And I believe that if we can increase the GPM by that significant uh, amount and we're able to do so, I know that the cost you know, is, is, is pretty high, but it's something that I, I believe in. And if we can get it, I think that we can get it, especially 
uh, now opposed to later because you know especially if these guys are looking at trying to get this into their plan so i fully support what the engineers have come up with and and their findings it's just whether or not we can actually do it legally and um and as quickly as possible thank you thank you melvin any other commissioners all right anything from the public All right, I'll close 12C. Thank you, everyone. All right, we will now move on to item 13, hazardous fuel reduction report 13A, uh, receive brush chipping and debris removal report, pilot programs areas two, special project services consultant Hendricks, please provide the report. Thank you, President Warren. Uh, commissioners, before you is a slide summarizing the brush chipping contractor costs for the month of August 2020. Uh, we still have yet to receive the um, data for September, so we're just going with August for now. Um, also included on the slide is the operational data for the month. The district provided brush chipping services to 85 residences, chipping nearly 5,600 cubic yards of brush. Average cost per yard of cubic brush was $4.11. We can see here there were 10 cancellations during the month of August. Um, additionally, seven other residences who did not receive services because uh, reasons such as their piles were not ready, their property was inaccessible, or no pile was found at the residence. Um, end of report. I'm happy to answer any questions. All right. Thank you, Special Projects Services Consultant Hendricks. Any questions from the uh, commissioners? Anything from the public? Hearing none, we'll now move to 13, receive the update on home ignition zone, HIC and district lot cleanup and video project, emergency services manager, Captain Gluhan. Denise? Got it, thank you. So I uh, discussed a little bit uh, back in my uh, emergency services manager report slides. We you are very garbled, Denise. Yeah, Denise. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Uh, are you underwater? Project, um, uh, two weeks to get that two-day project longer. Right now we're trying to maybe let me try let me just try moving a little bit here is this any better oh it's much better any better yes yes yep you came up from bottom much of better? Pool. okay so i did i did it was a little, it got a little warm so i decided to go for a swim sorry um so to just go back uh again the the project was uh, a little bit uh, identified in the previous slides the parcel project will be a two-day project we are coordinating with the video production company for timing, but our hope is to get this uh, completed in the next two weeks. Um, and then again, the educational video will be uh, forthcoming from um, Jackson Rickett Drones uh, Production Company. The secondary HIZ uh, is put on hold currently. Uh, we're looking into uh, contracts and funding for that. Uh, currently we are at almost at the 60 originally um, contracted HIZs. We have a, a couple of cancellations that we still can fill and we'll be addressing that next month's agenda items. And a report. Thank you very much, Captain. All right. So we've, um, any questions from the commissioners? Any co public comment? All right, we'll now move item, remember item 13C has been pulled from the agenda. So we'll now move to 13D. Received report on hazardous fuel reduction, page mill shaded fuel break phase two. Captain Gluhan again. Thank you again. So to continue on, um, I showed the mapping earlier in the slides of the phase two. We do have the proposal um, that we have uh, received from the Fire Safe Council. Um, they will be awarding the contract to the bidder and the vendor will be uh, coordinated to set up. This will require traffic control and we do have to still secure the letters to the residents so that we can uh, have right of way or they can have right of way to pass onto the property to do the shaded fuel break. And again, as a reminder, the shaded fuel break 
is the removal of vegetation, uh, both horizontal and vertical vegetation to set up a cooler, uh, more park-like setting and remove excess uh, brush debris uh, along the sides of the roads and the laddering fuels from the grasses to the brush to the trees. Um, end of report. Great. All right. Um, is there any discussion from the commission? Item 13E. Uh, I just want to say, I, I think these are great projects. I'd love to see, let's finish Page Mill Road, and then move on to the other arterial streets in the district, Moody, Altamont, Magdalena, Mora, and get them treated as soon as we can also. Excellent. I think a lot of that also fits into our strategic planning that we have going on too. So I, I think uh, adding that into some of the, the expanded objectives. Thank you. Any public comment? All right. Thank you very much. Um, we will now move on to, um, where are we? Um, 13E, which is approve proposal and allocate funds for um, that, for funds for uh, Page Mill uh, Road, shaded fuel break phase two under terms a first amendment to agreement with Santa Clara County Fire Safe Council related to brush chipping professional services. General Manager Logan, please present the item. We're gonna go pay for this now. Pay on mute. There we yep, go. Got it. Um, yes, you'll, you'll see in uh, the proposal and this is ready to move forward for the shaded fuel break. So I would uh, recommend approval of the proposal and allocation of funds so we can uh, perform the shaded fuel break phase two. Great. Thank you, Jay. All right, and now I'll entertain a motion for item 13E. Vaughn, Is that so, you, Melvin? Yeah, Vaughn, so move. Any second, please? Tyson, second. Tyson, second. All right, the item is now under discussion from the commission. Is there any discussion from the commission? Great project. Let her, let's roll. Any public comment on this item? Hearing none. Uh, if there's no further discussion, we'll now vote. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct a roll call. President Warren? Yes. Vice President Vaughn? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Spreen? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Commissioner Carr? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Carr? Janice? And once. Going twice. Voting. <laughs> Janice, just press down the space. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, I approve. Thank you. And Commissioner Kearney? Yes. All right, motion passes seven zero. Excellent. We will now move to item 13F, receive updates on renewal of COE, FHR, and brush shipping personnel, uh, brush shipping professional services agreement scheduled for November 17th, 2020. Uh, commission meeting, General Manager Logan, please provide the update. Uh, thank you, President Warren. Uh, as you recall, as we were putting the agreements together with Fire Safe Council, we had this, the COE, which is Community Outreach and Education, coupled with the Hazardous Fuel Reduction uh, Program. That was one agreement. And then we had a separate agreement for brush chipping and then for the shaded fuel breaks under brush chipping. What we're going to do is come back to you on November 17th, and this is one of the reasons the item was pulled 13C, to come back to you with an integrated total one contract package that will have all, all three of those items in it and shaded fuel break would be now included under hazardous fuel reduction, not under the chipping program. So just, uh, just a, an introduction that you'll receive that update and the agreement next, next month, November 17th. Thank you, end of report. Great. Thank you, General Manager Logan. Any discussion from commissioners? Is there any public comment? Hearing none, 
We'll now move to item 14, personnel update. All right, Roger, it's you and I. Um, Commissioner Spreen, do you want to give the update on the personnel, sub on the personnel or should I do it? I'm happy to have you continue if you'd like. Sure, okay. Um, so just a brief um, uh, FYI informational uh, update to the commission. Um, our general manager's contract is up here at the end of the calendar year. So in my role as the president, I have engaged Jay to discuss uh, terms uh, um, for amendment to that agreement and hoping to be able to come back with an actual agreement um, for an ex uh, actually an amendment to our current agreement um, at the November 17th meeting. Um, Roger, anything to add to that? No, I think that now that the uh, you know the audit and other things are behind us, this is something that's a, a key focus for us. Obviously, you know it's a I think it's a great thing that over the past couple of years we've now developed the staff that's making all this stuff happen. But I was looking at this agenda, going, my God, all this stuff we're going through because we're doing so much stuff. It just shows that we we're dependent on having a quality staff. And we need to make sure that's a, our top priority. So. Uh, I'm glad we can get back to that right now. Great. Bob, any input on staffing? Because it's a very complex area. Uh, no legal input. Obviously, to the extent uh, the scope and the uh, amount of work based on the strategic plan and everything else you have going uh, requires more than a half-time code, which is what the general manager's current code is. The, um, you know, what we'd be coming back to the board with would be a proposal to get the work done. And, and uh, I suspect that will be um, uh, a full-time uh, allocation uh, for the general manager position. Very good. Thanks, Rob. Roger, do you have something else to say? No, I was just gonna add on to that, say that that thrills me as uh, those of you remember just a couple of years ago, we were talking about how we would get this first slot open that I was uh, fighting hard for a full-time position. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased that things have moved the level where now it's really become come real. So uh, it, it's a great, I think it's really a big milestone for us as an organization. I'm very proud of it. And thank you, uh, Jay, for making this stuff grow and blossom to where it really is a full-time position now. Yeah, and thank you for, for saying that. I, I also want to st thank the staff that's on this phone call and you just hear the expertise and the enthusiasm in their voices, even though it's getting toward the end of a long day and we've all been working very hard since <laughs> October 6th and before. But um, there are positions open in our budget now that I didn't want to recommend or was hesitant in filling because we had the, the meeting with the Board of Supervisors in front of us. Now that that's completed, I think, coming back to the uh, commission on November 17th would be also those vacant positions and what is going to be the will of the commission in, in filling those. Great, thank you Jay, we look forward thank to that. You. Sure. And if I may speak up, I have to say my recollection is exactly the same as Rogers. Every time he raised this question about increasing the, the hours or at the very beginning, I pushed back, I was being conservative and I would say, probably too, well, I'd say I was too conservative. <laughs> I, I said, let's fill the position, let's see how things develop. And I'm very pleased with how things have developed. And I would say I'm, I'm very comfortable saying I've changed my opinion and that I'm, I'm uh, no, longer, um, no longer an advocate for keeping it at the, the uh, level it is now. Roger, you were right. Okay, all right, Roger, you were right. <laughs> All right, any other further comments from the commissioners? Anything from the public? All right, with that, we'll move to item 16, the financial consultant report. Item 16 A and B, receive updates on the FY 2021-2022 budget development and receive reports on FY 2021 and 22 2022 appropriation limit summary. Financial consultant Vargas, take it away. Okay, thank you. Um, so I don't have any updates for um, 16A. Um, it's been a busy month and, and also kind of still early in the process, um, so, but we will work on that between now and the November 17th meeting. So I'll have an update for you then. Um, 
And then in your packet, you have the uh, report about the uh, fiscal year 2022 appropriation limit summary. That is um, a resolution that we give to the, the county. Um, they are the, the ones who um, establish what our appropriation limit is for the year. And that's the amount um, that we can spend um, of the taxpayer's money. And, and um, as you, as outlined in the report, it's well above what our budgeted uh, goal is. So my recommendation is to approve 16C. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. All right. All right, is there any further discussion from the commission? Anything from the public? All right, we will now move to item 16C, which is actually adoption of resolution number 20-32 of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District, establishing the appropriations limit for the district for fiscal year 2020 through 2021 in accordance with title, brief letters, is it 13B of the California Constitution and Government Code section 7910 and establishing a period of con uh, for contesting such limits, financial consultant Vargas, please introduce the item. This is item 16C, resolution 2023. Not sure that I have any, um, you know, any more introduction, except that, like I said, uh, I would recommend. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Corey. All right. I need a, um, a motion. Carney, so moves. Good. Second. Duffy, second. Okay, the item is open for discussion. Is there any comments from, or questions from the commissioners? Is there any comment or questions from the public? Hearing none, we will now vote. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct the roll call. I ain't uh, President Warren. Yes. Vice President Vaughn. Yes. Commissioner Tyson. Yes. Commissioner Price. Yes. Commissioner Spreen. Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kearney? Yes. Motion passes seven to zero. Thank you. We'll now move to 16D, approval of the final financial audit report from Eddie Bailey for fiscal year 2019 through 2020. Financial consultant Vargas, please introduce the item. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I hope that um, commissioners and staff, you all received the hard copy. Um, I sent it in the mail and it was scheduled to arrive to you all Saturday or yesterday. Um, and this is, um, you know, we saw the draft at last month's meeting. Um, there were three changes that were made. And so now this is the, we are just taking a, a motion to finalize this. Um, and I will post it to the website to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Are there any clarifying questions from the commission? All right, I'll now entertain a motion. Tyson's going to make a motion. All right. Is it George? That's George, yeah. Tyson uh, uh, moves that we approve the final audit report, financial right. audit report. Thank you, George. I need a second, please. Spring seconds. Thank you, Roger. All right, the item is now open for discussion. Is there any discussion from the commission? Is there any public comment? Hearing none, we will now move to vote. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct a roll call vote. President Warren? Yes. Vice President Vaughn? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Spreen? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kearney? Yes. And the motion passes seven to zero. All right, thank you. We'll now move to item 16E, receive disbursements for October 2020. Financial Consultant Vargas, please introduce the item. Thank you, the um, October disbursements. One more item. In your packet, and there are no updates to report, end of my report. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion from the commission? Any comments from the public? Hearing none, we'll now move to item 17, commission uh, members' reports. All right, 17A, three commissioner vacancies with at starting 12, December 20, uh, me, December 31st, 2020. Um, 17A, one, two vacancies for the town of Los Altos 
Hills, 17A2, one vacancy for unincorporated area. 17B, Commissioner Spring, Town of Los Altos Hills, um, City Council, expiration on November 30th, 2020. General Manager Logan, please provide your report. Uh, yes, thank you, President Warren. Uh, so we will be posting, we being uh, district clerk, will be writing uh, up an ad and then, and then posting these vacancies in the uh, local press, which is the town crier. I've also uh, consulted with the town of Los Altos Hills and arranged for it in their newsletter that will have uh, publicity about these, uh, eight, these uh, particular openings. And I think with all of the enthusiasm and visibility that came from the Board of Supervisors meeting, hopefully that has really been our best marketing for how important the fire district is and these commissioner seats. So I'm hoping that we have uh, good interest in the commission vacancies and would enjoy or appreciate any advice or suggestions from the commissioners as to how to do, to do this advertising and promoting of the vacancies. So thank you. If I can add to Jay, um, I had discussed earlier with Sarah today um, that we, you know, we had that banner across the top of our website when um, we were, when we had that, uh, um, the BOS meeting in mm -hmm. the public. And so um, we were thinking of, again, utilizing that banner um, front page to let the advertising be known. That's excellent. I also have already sent out inquiries to um, residents because on our website, we have an open posting for the commission vacancies at all times. The, the, vacant, the posting never ends or the application process never ends. It's a live process, it's always there, whether or not there's a seat. So there is a position if you go down through the banner under um, governing activities, uh, 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 commission information, you go down and there's on where the commission is, there's, an, there's a section there on how to apply to be a, a commissioner. So. That's already on our website, uh, but we can link to that from the big banner, which makes it much more visible. So thank you, Sarah and Corey. Okay. For that. And what's the process for those of us who are not terming out if we want to reapply? What's the process we're supposed to follow? Um, you have to, you, you reapply, you just go to the, go to where that website, where that's, that link is on our website and it'll take you right to the application page which I pretty much promise you, if you tried to find it on your own, it would be pretty daunting. So we have the link available on the website and I'll be glad to send it to any, anyone who's interested on the commission. So you just fill out the application and now wait to hear and get a call. Very good. Anyone All expert right. now who's, Duffy, you, you probably are the most expert at it. Four Any times. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I, so I recall, I just reapplied and reapplied. So, <laughs> so reapplied, it reapplied. Yeah. It's done online. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think right. uh, to just add real quick, um, and I see uh, Commissioner Kearney has his hand raised, but um, I think the commissioners in the past too have, have written a letter of interest to uh, oh, yeah. supervisor submitting and after uh, resubmitting their requests, kind of a personal letter of <laughs> I've served and I'd like to continue serving kind of thing. Yeah, that's good. That's exactly right, uh, Corey. Thanks for bringing that up because that's what you do. Send another letter letting them know you're interested. Very good. So on the website, if you go across the governance and it's the first uh, bullet down district commission overview, click on that. And in the middle of the page, how to apply for a seat on the fire district commission. It's there all year long. That should take you to the application form and then a letter. And so, yes. And the term yeah. limits are what? Three terms. Is that correct? Is it three? Yeah. Yes. All right. Very good. Thank you, General Manager Logan. Any further discussion from the commissioners? Commissioner Kearney had his hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry. Terry, go ahead, please. I'm just curious about the scheduling of this. I mean, I know there was a gap between whoever I replaced and whenever I showed up, but it seems to me that, you know, given the sort of momentum that we're feeling from our community, um, that it would behoove us to get these slots filled if there are actual vacancies. 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, and by the way, uh, technically, uh, I think what you end up doing is not being removed until they fill the slot. So, for example, I would love to uh, terminate by December 31st. So definitely start applying. Whoever wants to apply, start applying. Rob, My recollection was that it wasn't the, the application process, but it was uh, with the um, supervisor. That's right. correct. That's correct. That's right. Rob, but did we be, ever get I think any... He'll probably be highly motivated this time around. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, did we ever get any clarity on what the actual ruling is, you know, from in a term to when someone is reseated, what the vacancy policy is? I will get you an answer to that and I'll report at the next meeting. I, I suspect it's as, as consistent with practice that you remain in the, you remain in the position until the position is actually filled. Right. Um, but the intent is to do as you're doing is to get it filled in a timely manner so that the turnover is, you know, consistent yeah. with whatever your term time period is. Right. And that's why we want to get these things post public out in the public now. Good. All right. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, General Manager Logan. Anything else on the commission from the commissioners on 17A? No. Anything from the public? Hearing none, do any of the commissioners or staff any other, have any other topics or add to future agenda items? All right. Thank you. If there's no public comments, or hearing none, I think we'll move to item 18, which is, I think everyone's looking forward to, which is adjournment. <laughs> Great. All right. This concludes the October 20th, 2020 regular meeting of the Los Altos Hills Town County, uh, Los Altos Hills County Fire District. The meeting adjourns at 1027 p.m. The their next regular the next regular meeting will take place via Zoom on November 17, 2020 at 7 p.m. Special Project Services Consultant Hendricks, please stop the recording. <laughs>